That was loud. Hello, hello. Welcome back. <laughs> oh boy. It's been really hard to stay away from this game. It's only been... It's not been that long. It's really not been that long. And here and yet, I really missed it. Been thinking about it. It's been stewing in my brain a little bit, you know? Holy heck. And welcome on in. I do hope you're all doing well today. I'm gonna, while it's still cool enough to, <laughs> I will keep streaming and hoping, hopefully, that we don't overheat and hoping that we can keep it going as long as possible before the sun sets on fire. Speaking of the sun setting on fire, last time I did that as well, pressed the wrong button. Last time, oh honey, <laughs> we uh, we found a couple more bad endings. Slightly more interesting, I would. I think it's safe to say. I'll move that out of the way so it's not bumping against. Yeah, I think it's it's safe to say we found a couple of interesting um, endings yesterday. <laughs> you know, heaven exploding in a cacophony of lit angels. It's pretty cool. Um, we also reached what felt like a more natural kind of long-term ending in uh, kind of coming to terms with our mortality, making friends with people, having a nice time, to then decide to go and use the Hall of Memories, um, which was introduced to us as something whereby we could insert our memories, uh, poignant memories only. And by doing that, we in return would receive access to others' memories of a equal um, poignancy. And indeed we did. Indeed, that is what we found, um, what we explored. And by doing that, we found uh, some of Deathral's memories, seemingly, of a strange couple dancing under the moonlight, glass ceiling shattering and melting into flowers, before we felt the memories all suddenly growing too powerful, too potent, too much for our brains to contain and thus we um slightly perished from that um so that was great um but from that experience <laughs> we figured that uh heading back to the hall of memories from an earlier playthrough uh, would hopefully unlock the key to not dying. It was quite a few days before, I think because we made it to a month of being in the Onder. So we went back a good 10 days or so. Hey, what's up, Nay? We going? We here? I'm excited. I'm so excited. It's, I've, I've not stopped thinking about this <laughs> since yesterday. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, lovely. Um, but yes, we returned back in time, and by doing so, we, uh, we went on a slight, I think we can say a slightly di only slightly different, barely noticeably different path. <laughs> by which I mean, uh, incredibly different. Um... And by incredibly different, I mean 
we went back to the Hall of Memories instead of not and kind of not trying to snoop into Death Roll's history. Um, but we kind of like popped back into the Hall of Memories and met with Rubius again. Yay! Um, to which we said, oh, we, we know like what the Hall of Memories is, but like we don't really know how to use it. To which he said, oh, Finan has betrayed Kara. And we're like, who's it's Kara? We, we, you mean Death Row? And he was like, this, that's what I fucking said, bitch. And uh, yeah, so with that, he plucked Finan out of the thin failed fabric of reality, uh, dragging him, dragging them kicking and screaming by the neck to seemingly a fate worse than death. No, fate worse than death or all. <laughs> if you're watching the VOD or the highlight or the YouTube video of this and that is the title, don't yell at me. It's, uh, I'm, it's I just came up with it. It's really, um, I'm feeling it. But yes, so um, we are now following this route of trying not to get too obsessed with the Hall of Memories, not like go fall too deep into it. But we have relived some of our own past memories, as well as lived some memories through Detheril's thoughts and feelings. Including S Susan... S Susan something. Um, and learning that... Um, not, not just that Ito has fucked the sun. <laughs> and that uh, Lil Rubeus is some harbinger of destruction. But that they are close family. Well, apart from Ito. Dethrell and Rubeus are family of some sort. Little, little brother going on. But uh, yeah. Ominous times. Interesting times. Please do join us. <laughs> Trying not to melt. Oh no! I feel that. I feel that big, big time. I've still got my fan on. It's. It feels slightly cooler today, Touchwood, so uh, I've, I'm scared for the next few days, though, because that's when it's going to get really, really hot. And I mean, this game doesn't help because everyone's just so beautiful. <laughs> everyone, everyone got popped by Ruby. Pretty much. Not an exaggeration. A lot of people got popped by Ruby. Heck. I barely got a wink of sleep last night, which isn't too surprising. How pathetic. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking and it keeps coming up. My existence in heaven was sad and lonely. Across every floor and every superior I was assigned to, I was treated poorly. I always craved positive attention from my superiors. I've always wanted respect from my peers. And I always got none. I have always loved books, loved the worlds that were woven by words. An alliteration. <laughs> but that is only a form of escapism, isn't it? That's not real love, is it? If one word could accurately describe my entire existence, it would be loveless. Starting strong today. Starting strong. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me know if the sound's alright as well. I've had a bit of a tweak from yesterday. If anything needs turning up, turning down, turning all around. Oh, that's good stuff. There we go. The pain that seizes my chest is almost unbearable at the mere thought of it. The flurry of feathers that scatter around me makes me cry even harder. But aside from that, I want it. I want it. I want... I want... I... Dethero, please. Yeah, we, we have... Oh, Jesus. We... <laughs> all just already... Um, we haven't experienced him in this route, though. Yet. Um, yeah, we've pretty much acknowledged that we, we can't... We kind of have a little bit of a crushy wish... <gasps> Every time it scares me. We have a little bit of a crushy-wushy on Death Wally Wally. 
Although we have lost a point, but I think that's because we accidentally lied. Accidentally on purpose. We didn't we didn't purposefully lie, but we pur we answered the way we wanted to answer. Hey, Web, welcome, Malders. How you doing, friend? As my old dad used to say, I want never gets. Yeah, but. But look, man, she's got a top hat and a monocle. What's not? What's not to want? <laughs> Hope you're doing well today, friend. Hope you're keeping cool. Death Row! Death Row! I. <laughs> He was Irish, wasn't he? Oh ho! I see you have a little angel of your own here. This is... This is impossible. This man, this... He is saturated in grace. Before I can react, he walks closer, his boots clapping mutely on the carpet. Instinctively, I take a step back, my wings trembling as he looks down upon me imperiously. She's even smaller than my own little angel. I feel like every other day my deeper voice gets slightly better. And then every other day it's slightly worse. It's weird. <laughs> it's a better day today. Thank you, Alders. Oh, dude. Like, legit. Legit. I'm slightly shook about how good it is. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, <laughs> and also, I'm in it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Never unnecessary, Alders. Appreciate you being here. And yes, this is a Irish German man. He's not officially Irish, but we voted. He's Irish. What's your name, Fraulein? Would it be Fraulein? Fraulein. Yeah. I, I am, um, Saijima. Is that a question? Do you doubt your own name, Fraulein? As being in the yonder broken you this much? <laughs> Startled, I smack away his reaching hand. The strange holy man only lets out an amused huff as he brushes off the cuff of his jacket, as though my dirt touch dirtied it. Lost little angels are always so feisty. Indeed. <laughs> Sorry, that was me, not Death Row. <laughs> Can you imagine, though? Though I would ask you not to push her so far, Keldren. This one is quite fragile. K Keldren? That would be Lord Keldren to you, Frowlin. Lord, Lord? What the. Even if he possesses grace, this man is no angel. No angel would ever be so arrogant to call themselves Lord either. I see you have acquired yourself an interesting specimen here, no? What is that address? Don't call her that! Ooh! 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 Got the claws out to date. Do you know how to address this one properly, little angel? His piercing gaze sends me another step backward. I... I... Unable to come up with an answer, I braced myself, expecting a snide comment. But, to my surprise yet again, Keldron only huffs and turns back to Death Row, ignoring me. Somehow, that stings even more. Ooh, I don't know this man. Stranger danger. <laughs> it's my excuse. Despite feeling shaken and humiliated by his easy dismissal, I stiffen my upper lip and stand where I am. If Death Roll doesn't tell me to go, then I won't be going. I see quite a lot has changed since I was last here. Which means things are not going well, are they, Nora? <laughs> you can say so. I see. And there is absolutely nothing I can do nor say to change your mind. Of course not. <laughs> How very selfish of you, no. Is it now? You and all who are aware of this transgression are welcome to think what you want. I have very little care. No. <laughs> I do not have any care. 
at all. If it had been anyone else who said that, I would have called their bluff. But I know better with you. You are truly heartless, aren't you, Null? I... You, you come up in my house! In my realm! This is my lady! Not my lady, but, you know, my lady. Keys lady. <laughs> what? What does this Keldron think he is? How dare this Lord barge in here and fling his insults around like this? I do everything I can and want to do. Would you not have done the same if there would be no repercussions? If there is no regret and only your deepest desire matters? Is there is no one who could stop you? <laughs> not even your god. This early, the eye is already open. After a moment of silence, Keldron makes an aborted movement of reaching into his jacket, before sighing and folding his arms instead. I keep forgetting that you are an entirely different beast. I would not make the same mistake again. Though I believe there will not be another opportunity. Isn't that right? No. <laughs> that is correct. And here I had hoped that the anomaly could change something. But that is not how it works, is it, no? Unfortunately. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh.
on. I'm like shooing. Just get, 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 get out. Not having it. Ah. <sighs> Frustration. Once again, I did not manage to get a good night's sleep. What is really night and day here? Isn't it all just night here? Rubbing the bags under my eyes, I sigh tiredly. Thanks to Keldrin's and the parents, I can manage to speak to Death Rail properly about what Ito told me. But really, what was I going to say? I still don't know the full story of what happened to Death Row. I still don't know why she is here in the Yonder instead of that home in her memories. Death Row's emotions were so vibrant. She was passionate in everything she said. The care she had for Obeus was palpable in the gentle way she touched him. If Ito didn't tell me they weren't related, then I wouldn't have any idea. So what happened to her? I want to know more. I really, really do. I need to know more. I need to. Oh my god! Oh my god! Get the f get the fuck! Get the fuck out my house! <laughs> don't don't want you here, mom. <laughs> uh, that's one rude dude, right, elders? Right, mate. Memory registered. Keldrin's available exchange. S seven? Who hurt you? <laughs> Damn! My god! Seven! Is he just storing them? What the fuck are, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Are you gonna look at mine? Huh? You gonna look at mine, Keldrin? Huh? Ooh. Ugh. Ready to fight today. Not expecting someone to be here so early, especially not Keldron of all people. I hover at the entryway, unsure of what to do as he tucks away his key. <laughs> what do we have here? A lost little angel. I breathe heavily through my nose, but as I'm about to turn and leave, Keldron speaks. You are making the same mistake as many before you have, Frowlin. Stop while you are ahead. And because I cannot help myself in my big mouth, I grind out the question between my teeth. What are you talking about? Null is not your god. I... I know that. I don't need you to tell me that don't you? I draw myself to my full height, which is not much, and glare fiercely at the strange smug man. Thank you, Ass. Much love. I do. Death Roll is more than just a deity. She's different. She cares. Oops. I think about our conversations. I think about the way she patiently indulges me as I ramble on about my books. The way she guides me with careful hands. No god would do that for me. Null is of course different. But saying she cares only proves that you are just as naive as all the others. You... Tell me, Rowland. What are you doing here? What can you possibly hope to achieve so far away from home? So young, so lost, so powerless. Have you even met your own god? Is your faith so fragile? The now familiar sharp pain surges up my chest. I flinch, aware of Keldron's piercing eyes tracing my movements. You... You don't know me. I know enough. But I must ask you this, Frowlin. Do you even know what the being you call Death Arrow is? What? For some reason, Keldron's simple question sends me into a deep panic. I don't... 
don't know. I don't know. But I do. Don't I? She... Death Earl said she's an uh, eldritch being. A and she's the mistress of the Yonder. Keldren's bow crease brow creases as he searches my face. It's an uncomfortable feeling like he's able to see into my soul. Then you are content with that. What... what do you mean? He closes his eyes, looking as though his patience is running out. Do you wish to know more about Noel? I... I do, but why is Keldron offering? What does he want? Why did he lead this conversation with that? But Keldron doesn't allow me the time to consider my answer. Oh, shit, alright. I was gonna say no, but... <laughs> there. Nola is something that was formed before the stars, whose reach is well beyond the endless darkness that conceived the worlds. This entity created the Yonder as a form of containment, all to restore what Null has lost. What she has lost? What? I ate my heart so my love may survive. But that still doesn't make sense. If that's what happened, then why did she make it sound like she caused that on her own? You must have wondered why Null lost all semblance of emotion. You must have wondered if that has passed. H has it? What do you think? I... She has always been kind. She has always been kind, and she has always been patient with me. Is that so? Seeing his reaction, it feels as though the ground is cracking beneath my feet. The pain in my heart intensifies. Are you... Are you telling me that it's all... That it's all fake? If my words are enough to sow seeds of doubt into your heart, little angel, then you must have suspected this yourself. But it... It, it doesn't feel... Why would she even need to fake anything with me? Whatever you have experienced with Null, the one you perceive as Death Earl is both an extension of Null's true self and the desire you harbor in your heart. Tell me, is everything a lie? This is quite a lot different from simple truth or lie, Fraulein. What? The Yonder was made with two purposes. One is to contain no and collect information. The other is to offer a clean slate to those who manage to get to it. My head spins, getting more and more confused by what Keldron is telling me. Why would Deathrill want to contain herself? And what does he mean by clean slate? Then it occurs to me. But the hole also has a special function, one that you'll have to take up to management. That is Death Earl, of course. And what would that function be? Why, to completely erase the memory you've given to the hall from your mind, of course. That can be done? Of course. In fact, many came to the Yonder just for this hole alone. To forget, yet somehow keep that certain memory unmarred? Can you imagine the amount of masochists who would love that? Mm. Oh, Finnan. Oh, Finnan. Rip Finnan. <laughs> what matters is how I choose to move forward. You are getting there. But memory erasal isn't exactly uncommon. Magic can easily achieve such a feat. Memory preservation, like the hall's normal function, is rarer, but 
It's not completely unheard of. What makes this place so special? Let me be blunt. Asking no for an erasal of memory can be something more thorough than just that. True death is when the memory of someone or something is utterly forgotten. Oh! 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 Shit! Yeah! Oh, he got. Fuck you! Fuck you, Calder! <laughs> In short, once you ask no for that specific function, the you of the past, up to the point of your creation, would cease to exist outside of the yonder. You would not exist even in your own memories. Clean slate indeed. But still... But still... Against my will, tears begin to fall. Do I... Do I have to choose? I don't... I, I don't want that. I don't... The choice is still yours, Fraulein. But as far as I'm aware, there is only one way. There is the only way for you to stay as you are, and still retain what you have learned. Little angels are so exhausting. You may thank me later. I accept the finest wine one can find in handwritten notes. See you around, Fraulein. Stunned, I can only watch as Keldron brushes past me and leaves the hall. It takes me several moments to compose myself. What an infuriating man he is! Keldron knows exactly how to get under my skin. Either I'm just easy to read, or he's incredibly good at dealing with angels. Suddenly, I feel a surge of sympathy for whichever angel has to deal with this smug bastard. But despite that, I have a very strong inkling that Keldron wasn't lying to me. Putting a hand over my heart, I try to rub away the remaining discomfort of the pain that has been assaulting my grace. Keldron is undoubtedly cautious of death row, and yet he still goes to the yonder. He knows far more about her than I do, but isn't as close to her as Ito or Rubeus. As opinionated as Keldron is, now that I've gotten over the shock of his initial appearance, I don't think he's made any of his remarks callously. Still, whether I believe Keldron's words or not can be arguably irrelevant. Maybe I... I've really fallen into the mistake my superiors have always accused me of again, and that is blindly following my emotions, disregarding everything else around me. Perhaps there is some truth to their teachings after all. Looking at the pillars bearing my own name in death rows, I cannot help but feel ashamed of myself. Because of my... Inability to handle my repressed emotions in the past, I dove into Death Roll's memories to chase that almost euphoric emptiness of her heart. This led to the insatiable need to learn about what happened to her, and eventually the desperate desire to experience what I've never had in my miserable existence. I've given in to every inhibition that stood before me, I have taken advantage of the welcome I was present with here, and completely lost sight of the path in front of me. Heavens, I don't even know what that should be. And yet, even with this self-revelation, I know I won't be able to resist the temptation for long. I still want to know what happened to Detheroth. And a more silent, more shameful part of me still desperately wants to get closer to her. But I know these feelings are just superficial. What irony. Using the void to fill the void within myself. 
I can't stay here. Yet I can't go home, either. Piercing pain returns, making my knees weak. I fall to the ground, gathering up a handful of feathers with a sad smile. The choice is still mine. Hmm? What a terrible lie. Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah. Young angel. Hello, Jethro. You spoke with Keldren. Looking at her gentle smile, I feel my heart shuddering. If I ask for this, am I going to have to forget her too? I have. Yes. Are you here to make a choice? I... I... Maybe I am. I might be incompetent. I might be weak. But I'm not stupid. All this time absorbed in my own fascination and new focuses, it has always been nagging at the back of my mind. Like the clipboard, I am deteriorating. Not just my grace and my faith, but my entire being. I am turning into a mortal, and there is nothing I can do to stop it. Sure, the speed of it has slowed down since my initial arrival at the Yonder, but it hasn't stopped. Even without a means to tell the correct time, I know I have been sleeping for longer. I have to consume more meals, I have to consume liquid now, too. Yet I've been ignoring it all, distracting myself with other activities, with new knowledge I could never hope to attain back in my heavens. It's almost like I've tried too hard to make myself believe in the delusion that I found myself a task to do. I've, If I just allowed myself to get used to the changes, it would have been fine. I didn't want to consider that the deterioration would continue even if I turn into a mortal. I didn't want to consider that it would get worse when my grace fades away. I wanted to believe that it would get better with time, but in truth, time is actively working against me. If the yonder is so difficult for an angel, it would be hundreds of times worse for a power powerless human. But I don't want to go back. More feathers fall to the floor as my tears darken the carpet. You know you cannot stay. Hearing that from death row hurts far more than my tormented grace. Still, I stem my tears and look up at her, knowing that this is something I cannot avoid. I... I know. Kneeling on the plush carpet with my wings fluttering around my shoulders, I feel so utterly defeated. There is nothing left for me here. Nothing but my imminent doom. Dinan told me about how my memories can be preserved in the hall, but wiped out for myself. I see. Of course, the one thing they did not conveniently forget to tell you would be that. Keldron also spoke to me about how requesting that from you would be wiping all traces of my existence from everywhere else other than the Yonder. I see. Of course he did. If you choose this little angel, you may preserve what power you have left. Before the process happens, you may choose when and where your new timeline will begin. I can choose? Can I choose to be born here? Her amused chuckle makes me smile despite myself, despite the hurt. Nothing can ever be born here. 
as I thought. All the choices bar one, huh? Hanging my head, I think about my options. They are terribly limited, I realize, and I soon feel trapped. Angels cannot adapt. We are made for a purpose, and when we fall, when we fail, we fall or perish. I am no exception. My fall from grace is only prolonged because I came to the yonder. Me without memories and a completely fresh start is a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. If I go back to my world, not even the heavens, my residue grace will quickly attract its attention, and it would not be long until they condemn me. If I go anywhere else other than home, my lack of memory and inability to adapt would send me to an early grave. We are what we remember. I don't want to die like that. Without identity, without anything to define me as me. I don't want to wither away either caught in fear and regret until the end of my days. I, I can't go home. I, I can't go anywhere and I can't stay. That is always a choice. You do not have to make a decision at this very moment. You know that. I know. But lost time is lost forever. Is it? I blink up at her, surprised by the immediate question, or rebuke. Isn't that right? This is the void, after all. Tell me, child. What is it that you desire? Heart thudding in my chest, fear pushing against my neck, and a feeble hope burning at the tip of my tongue, I whisper, infinitely desperate before an infinite power. Sure as the endless midnight of yonder, death all smiles. Interesting. Interesting indeed. The world around me shifts. I blink, scrambling to hold on to the carpet. Feel the material slip through my fingers like water. Death Roll smiles down upon me, but she too is fading away. Perhaps next time. Mm -hmm. If I had a heart, I could love you. Huh? What? What? Fuck! <laughs> I hate it here! No! <sighs> Emotional damage! Hi! My name is Saijima. Reporting for duty! <laughs> Acting. <laughs> Today is my first day on the job. <laughs> well, not just any job. I have been selected to be a junior scribe for the Archangel Raziel, Keeper of Mysteries. To work at the Heavenly Archives has been a dream of mine since before I could read. I'm dying inside. As soon as I heard there was an opening, I rushed to apply for the position. To my immense excitement, I got a call back. Waiting in line of a fresh-faced, eager recruits just as myself, I can barely contain my excitement. I bounce on my heels a little, trying not to break decorums. Today is going to be great. I just know it. The start of my very own adventure, the start of the newest chapter in my existence! As I wait in line, I go through the information supplied in the clipboard. The location given here is a bit unexpected, but that isn't going to deter me. I might have a bad track record with following directions, but I would not let that get in the way of my dream job. Oh, we have a little bit, haven't we? <laughs> Definitely rewound a little bit! <laughs> Absolutely nothing is going to ruin this day. 
<laughs> Hello. Oh, wait, no! Really? What the fuck? Come on, oh god. <sighs> Let's just see how well you fare this time. <gasps> I mean, it's not a bad ending! What the f- <laughs> Just, I've just ragged old, just ragged old death, wasted. Oh my god! I'm in a game, man. What the fuck is? <laughs> Alders, this is this is fuck. <laughs> Join us at a later stage, but I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know where we go from here. I kind of. Mm. No, you're good. We got an ending, <laughs> and it was not a bad. Ah, bus arrows. It was not a bad ending. Technic, technically, and isn't the music good, Alders? So good. Yeah, I love this song. This song's oh, oh, blah. so good. Ooh, oh. You guys, this is a visual novel. There are many endings. <laughs> do not fear. Do not fear. We got an ending. And it was not a bad ending. Fuck. Okay. 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 Okay, so we had a full realization that our options were death. We could choose which avenue of death. We could go back to heaven and die. We could stay here and die. We could go to a different realm and die. Death Rail was like, if I had a heart, I could love you. And rewound, rewound time for us. So we started back at the beginning and then re approached the yonder realm once more. <sighs> can we get her a heart? How do we? Can we just order one online? <laughs> Is that what we've got to do? I mean, it's our first not bad ending, so I'll, I'll take it. I have one immediate idea of where we can start. And that was accidentally lying to Ito. Get on Amazon for a heart, thanks. <laughs> gotta go to the dark web for a heart, right, gotcha. We, got, we gotta go to Keldron or something. Oh, man. But welcome on in, guys. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Welcome on into Chiro, welcome on back, Hess. Yeah, we we carried on the route we were at yesterday. Nom nom nom. Where we um were deep diving into um where we were deep diving into uh, the Hall of Memories. Um we met up with Keldron again, who pretty much let us know that Oh, do you know who she is, though? Do you know who Death Roll is, though? And we kind of, kind of knew, but kind of didn't. And it was like, um, and then we had, yeah, crisis and realized that death, death, or death. Oh, 
Sharks might do. <laughs> Shark heart would work. Oh fuck. I love the writing in this a lot though. It's it's like it was a pleasure to voice act for stuff the first time round, even if I I like somewhat forgot some of the lines I recorded, but it it's working out for the plot reasons. Um but <laughs> but also like just playing it and voice acting along to it as we play is really, really fun. Um, fuck. Let's see if this makes any difference. Yes! All of the above are evil. Let's go back to it so we can remember. Alright. We are destruction, fear, deceit, and ignorance, and the light of suns. Hmm. Maybe not all of us were bad, <laughs> pardon me. But yes, those are what we are. Or at least as we are, as you see myself and our precious Ruby, the aspects of them. What? What are you talking about? Wouldn't you say almost all of those are bad? I... Scared and confused, I'm unable to answer Rito right away, feeling dread well up in the pit of my stomach. Destruction and fear? Definitely bad. Deceit, that's... Lies are always horrible, even though myself have fallen into using them before. Ignorance, this is something I have the most pause about. Because what am I but ignorance? But how am I going to answer Ido? Am I going to say how I feel, or am I going to try and lie to him? My chest flares hot at the thought of lying. We're not going to lie this time, even though, yeah, it was a half lie last time. <laughs> Unable to really say anything, I nod jerkily. All of those traits, aspects Ido said are bad. Except the light of suns, but that's... That's completely different from everything else on that list. I see. That is what they all thought, too. He leans back against his chair, a contemplative look on his face. Looking at him, I can't help but wonder which one Ido is. Is he fear or is he deceit? Is he destruction or ignorance? Or is he even the light of suns? Well, rubies destruction, right? And which one is Rubeus? D destruction right? <laughs> Perhaps it would have been better for many if we were wiped out. Perhaps it would have been easier for Kara if we never existed. My eyes snapped to him. But she... She loved you. She did. Oh, we don't? Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nay. Yeah, it's, I'm starting to blur. They're all starting to blur together. But that's not how you chose to be, right? Hmm? What do you mean? Was that the way... The way you were made? You can say something like that. Then... Then... Then it's not like you chose to be bad. Ah, uh, so we're going back again. We are twisting ourselves into a knot about it. Oh no. Alright, I'll oh, fuck off. Bye. <laughs> it seems my presence is unwanted here. Why am I surprised by this? Deathrell said it before. I'm not the only angel she knows. I'm not the first angel to have caught her attention. What was I thinking, rushing here like that? Did I think if I shed some tears she would love me like she had loved her family? Like Ito? Like Rubeus? Taking several staggering steps back, I hastily bow and escape through the door. Not even knowing if they... If Death Row acknowledges me or not. Oh, Saijima. You are so pathetic. We are jealous, chicken. We are. 
Once again, I did not manage to get a good night's sleep. Oh, okay. What is day? What is night? Oh! Oh! Wait! What? Wait! What? Okay. Okay, so he's asked us what he... what... we th think Death Rail is again. She... Death Rail said she's an eldritch being and she's the mistress of the yonder. Triumphantly, I glare at Keldrin as he grows quiet. But my smugness doesn't last long as I quickly turn unnerved as Keldrin searches my face intensely. I see. There is nothing I can say to change this particular situation, and quite frankly, I do not care. I have better things to worry about this stage of the game. Enjoy your remaining stay in the under, Frowlin. What? Excuse me? Is that just because we we didn't attack you and, and, and be awkward and shit? Oh, okay. Oh, hmm, okay. The fuck, Keldrin? The fuck is wrong with you? Sir. What was that all about? And what did he mean, remaining stay? Oh, I hope I won't run into him again. It takes me several moments to compose myself. Are we are we gonna actually go into it though? Yeah! Oh shit! Oh my god! Huh. Huh. Ah ha 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 so if we stay and chat hmm interesting interesting shaking my head i head towards my memory pillar i want to know what happened to death roll that i can't deny if there's anything i can help her with then even with my meager strength i would do my best to make it happen if there's anything I can help her with. Oh, this is anyway. My bad. Swallowing dryly, I insert my key and turn it, focusing on the memory of how I came to be in the yonder. Oh, wow. That is a, that is a strong memory. Memory exchanged. Sajima's available exchange. One. Because we also learned that Keldrin had seven. Keldron's got seven. Keldron's got fucking baggage. But he's also not seemingly spending it. Which is interesting. Ugh. That really wasn't pleasant. It isn't the reminder of the pain when I arrived at the Yonder that got me reeling. It's the reminder of how callous my new superior had been, how all of them are the same in their in their attitude. I no longer react so violently to my own suppressed emotions, though, which is a small blessing in the most twisted of ways. I'm either getting used to it or I'm numbing myself to it again. Yeah, seven to chew. <laughs> like when we come in, he's on number seven. It's like, damn. Neither is a comforting thought. Breathing heavily through my nose, I try to slow down my rabbiting heart before turning towards Death Rail's pillar. Recognize. Saijima, Angel, requesting access, the void. Access granted. Query, memory request? I... I want to see the immediate memory following threading farewell, please. Requesting, promise. Request denied. Oh, we need more. What? I mean, why is that? Memory assessment requested. Sajima's available exchange. One. Conclusion. An equal exchange. That... That wasn't enough, huh? Oh, is that... Oh, Matt, is... Mm, is that why... Is that why Keldrin has seven? Is he saving up for some... Some real deep shit with... With her? Is he looking into hers? Is he... 
Because he might have a relationship with Cassius of some form, but that was just a... Just a theory. Um... How... How many of my own memories would be enough? Memory exchange assessment requested. Saijima's requested... Saijima's requested exchange. The void. Promise. Calculating. Saijima's estimate for equivalent exchange. Four. Query. Different memory request? That's... That's fine for now. Thank you. Request cancellation granted. <coughs> Pardon me. Memories smell very sweet. So three more memories. This memory must be an important one indeed. I held myself together pretty well today, but I don't think I can handle a second pass at my past. Thank you guys. Dejected, I turn away from the pillars and leave the hall. Interesting. I'm allergic to Caldron, that's what it is. Still feeling dazed after waking up, I decide to have some food before going on with my day. Though, I've been picking on the crumbling biscuits more than eating them. We haven't met, uh, Freya in this one, have we? No, we haven't. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I take a big bite of my biscuit and immediately cringe at how dry it is. Coughing, I reach for the pitcher of water and down two full glasses. Ah. 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 It's getting worse, huh? I don't really want to think much about this. I know I chose to ignore what's happening even after several moments of clarity, because if I really, really think about it, I would only end up breaking down. Gotta get up to break down. Shakily, I put down the glass and push the rain remaining biscuits away. Right, right, right. Right. What am I going to do today? I want to gather enough memories to view that important memory of Death Roll as soon as possible. At first, I balked at my own no nosiness, but Death Roll said it's fine, so I don't spend too long feeling guilty about it. But I don't want to be a crumbled lump for the rest of the day after several traumatic or upsetting memories either. You have to stop being weak at one point, Saijima. <sighs> I lean back against the chair as my mind wanders against my will. Am I finding a new task? Am I seeing what I'm trying to do as a new task? What am I trying to make out of this? Netherell isn't my god. She doesn't expect anything out of me. She doesn't ask me to do anything. I haven't done anything for Deathrell. And yet, she is still kind. Kinder than anyone has ever been to me. What am I gonna do? What do I want to do? What am I gonna choose? I... Oh, Cassius. Hi, chicken. Ugh. Biscuit imagery too strong. Needed hydration. Right, she's she's whew, she's going through it. <laughs> the door swings open, cutting me off of my monologuing tangent. Cassius steps through, seemingly lost in his own thoughts as his get. Oh wait, his finish. <laughs> Finn and still dead, aren't they? <laughs> ah, ah, hmm, ah, hmm, oh, ho, mm hmm, yeah, okay, ah, fuck, hi, ah, shit. <sighs> Seemingly lost in his own thoughts as his eyes are glazed over, staring at me like he doesn't really see me. The second stretches into an eternity as I stare at him wide eyed and not knowing what to do. It's like looking at an oncoming storm or an imminent and sudden danger. I know I have to get out of the way, but I can't seem to move, frozen in place as my brain goes still. The clicking sound of the door closing shutters that brief moment of morbid serenity. Then Cassius growls. Hey! You! Uh, 
I flinch out of my chair, sending, sending it clattering to the ground as Cassia advances towards me. Fuck. The dining table is the only thing standing between us, and I can only stumble backwards so far. L leave me alone. Leave you alone. Leave you alone? You don't belong here. You were never supposed to be here. You who never knew about the Yonder, who never tried to reach it from the deepest depths of hell. You who was given this chance without trying yet, only bring chaos wherever you set foot. Though my fear is strong, it, it can't stop the surge of anger at his words. This arrogant, ignorant fool of a demon! Chaos? CHAOS?! You're right, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be tossed into this world. I didn't ask to have my grace and power and sense of self stripped away day by day. I didn't ask for that bitch to try and kill me. Oh, <laughs> are you do oh my God. She, she talking about Finn. You little shit. Ooh. I jump as his fists meet the table. The cracking and splintering of wood has me scrambling backward. My back immediately meets the wall, forcing out a startled yelp. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Cassius's biceps barely ripple as he flings the table to the side, advancing towards me. Get away from me! You'll... You'll be punished too if you... Ah! Cassia snatches at my defensively raising arm, his grip immediately crushing my bone. Teeth bared, he hisses venomously. A terrible smell of sulfur and copper. Blood permeates the air as I become trapped. You really think I care about that at this point? Nobody is going to do it. Nobody is taking out the vermin that's corrupting this place, so I'm doing it! Oh no. No. I'm used to it. Cassius. I will do the dirty work. Cassius is going to kill me. Say your prayers, little one. No! With a deafening roar, Cassius raises his hand, viciously clawed and darkening with hellish powers. It is as if time has slowed down into a syrupy and sickening pace of tar. My heart stutters. Once. Twice. Tethero. Tethero! Tethero! Darkness floods into the room. Cassius's savage expression doesn't even have the time to change before he is swept away. I gasp, collapsing to the floor as the pressure against me suddenly disappears. Perhaps it is just my imagination, but my descent seems slowed by the shadows. Something cold, something gentle, washes over me. Fear disappears. And for the briefest of seconds, I believe I see a twinkle of blue eyes watching me from the dark. Death or out. Oh. oh my god! Man, I feel bad for Cassius though! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm fucking shocked! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> My, you are in rough shape. Rubbing where Cassius grabbed me, I stagger to my feet. Thank, thank you f for saving me. <laughs> no need. What kind of host would I be if I would not respond to such a sincere cry for help? Tilting her head upwards towards the moon moonlight, moonlight. Tilting her head up towards the moonlight, Deathrall hums. Tis a shame he closed his own doors when he did. He 
hates... hated me because of what happened to Finnan. That, perhaps. But neither Finnan's nor his actions could be laid at your feet. It does feel like my arrival brought upon their demise. If I had never come here, if, if I wasn't so clumsy, then maybe they didn't have to die. And truly, do you care so much about that? What? I... Do you care if anyone would condemn you for being the catalyst of their destruction? Do you care? If this reflects poorly upon you. Stunned, I open my mouth to answer her, but not a sound comes out. The obvious answer would be yes, right? I, I, I never meant for anyone to die. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. But is it really my fault? Oh! She brave? No. <laughs> Needless to say, I am shocked at my own answer. Less shocked by the sharp pain that follows. I... I... Do go on. Not admitting to one's fault is heavily punishable back home. Being the cause of a disturbance is especially frowned upon, no matter either side's reasons. But try as I may, I can't find a single instance where I was knowingly rude to Finnan. Cassius and I naturally clash, but the way he reacted to me before Finnan's death was nonchalant, if not somewhat antagonistic. Am I at fault for simply existing? If that is how all this came to be, be, then whoever piles the weight of Finnan and Cassius's deaths upon me would be just as unjust as my superiors. I clutch out my chest as my pain flares again, but that doesn't stop me from speaking my mind. I don't, I don't care about any of that. I didn't do anything to Finnan. I didn't do anything to Cassius either. Not to the extent of making them want to seriously harm me. I wasn't the one who killed Finnan. I wasn't the one who killed Cassius. I am not to blame for their actions. The pain pulses in my chest, but I am less hurt and more tired of it. Am I wrong for speaking up for myself? Am I wrong for not hanging my head in shame after for the actions of others? I... I didn't want them to have to die. But I wasn't the one who made the decision to violate the Yonder's rule. You are correct. Of course. Does it feel good? What? Does it feel good to not blame yourself for the actions of others? Something within me loosens at the sight of her smile. My wings curl around my shoulders, fluttering gently despite the fallen feathers. It... It does. Thank you. You... You have helped me so much ever since my arrival. If... If there is anything I can do, please... Please, let me know. Hmm... And what is it, exactly, that you can do? Fucking, Death Roll should hope hot, um, that Hot Wings, Hot Wings show, because she's really good at asking questions. <laughs> We've fallen in more ways than one, right? Taken aback by her question, I blink, flabbergasted. Pardon? What is it that you can do? What exactly do you think you can do for me? Hot ones with the void, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Insecurity raises its ugly head. 
What can I do for you? Sorry. What exactly do I think I can do for her? Why do I think I can do anything for someone like Detheral? And why am I so desperate for Detheral to know I can be of use to her? <sighs> I mean, only one of them's really an answer. Or is it? Oh! She's having a moment of braveness. Anything. I, I mean it. If there is anything I can do for you, I would do it. You... You have only ever been kind, even though I'm an unwanted guest. You've saved my life. You stood up for me when you didn't have to. I know... I know there's not much I can do, but... Surely you just... I did not do any of that for you. I understand. Still, I... If I ask you to take your own life, would you do it? <sighs> you said anything, did you not? Or was that a lie? <laughs> I'm in danger. Stunned, I feel my insides run cold. Detheral? She... I don't know what to say to her. I don't know what to do except helplessly stare up at Detheral waiting for her to say something. Give me an instruction. Tell me what to do. It is not a transaction, you know. I did not do anything for you, and I do not expect any repayment. Think of my actions and my words however you wish, but I did not do anything because I thought you would be of use to me. But your time is your own, little angel. Use it to your heart's content, and not for others. You do not have to be useful to someone to earn your self-worth. <sighs> At that moment, something warm and gentle settles over my heart, chasing away the ever-increasing pain of my grace. I love you. Oh! 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 Ah! I'm turning into a bird. I'm turning into a bird! I suspect Saijima is not there by accident and ulterior motives are at play. Well, we know... We, we know... We know that Detheral... We know that the void, the underworld, is there to fill a void of some sorts for Detheral. Um, she ate her heart for her bay, and, you know, that'll happen. So... You could wonder if, like, having the Hall of Memory and having- giving people an opportunity to experience the quote-unquote true death is- would accumulate power for her somehow, but it doesn't make sense, because with the Hall of Memory, if you give memories over, you get equal and opposite memories, death rowling seemingly included in that. But whether she gains power from that, I don't know. Whether the erasure of people's memories is what fills her void. Because she- yeah, she, wait, she can't- she can't have emotions because she ate her heart. The Hall of Memories can't take on a memory unless there's a strong enough emotion contained within the memory itself. So whether it's a collection or more of yeah, there is an ulterior motive of I need other people's emotions so I can begin to feel again and then I can consume them all and nom nom nom. <laughs> and that's a diff that's a different possibility. Um, maybe she just collects it like she does books as a way to escape. 
Ooh, that's a hot take fresh off the press. <laughs> Maybe that it's another library for her. You put a book in, you take a book out. Slurping them like noodles. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I need more hydration. I can feel my brain working fast. It's also really interesting, like, having to skip between commentary and then also, like, a very, very emotional character and a character who is literally incapable of emotion. It's a very interesting <laughs> challenge, like, just be there on the verge of tears as the main character, just like, I don't know what to do! And Death Row's just like, yeah, what's up? Uh... Hot ones with the void. These are the spiciest ever. Um, um, um. No effect on me. We. Oui. <laughs> and Velas is just. <laughs> it is difficult to seek out someone in the under. First off, how does one even do it? Should I stand there like an idiot in Death Roll's hall, opening and closing the door while noisily, noisily peering inside each room? I can't do that. I would certainly melt from the mortification. I don't want to make a fool of myself in front of her. The shock of yesterday sent me into an emotional overdrive. Enough to keep me from getting much sleep. It's certainly concerning. The erratic pattern of my rest schedule, that is, but I couldn't help it. Caught among the fear of being almost killed by Cassius. The relief of being saved. I feel so bad for Cassius. I feel so bad for Cassius. I didn't like dislike Cassius. <sighs> Fuck. If you are a void of emotion, would you crave other people's emotions? I mean, and if you could turn them against God in one fell swoop. You know? She isn't a creator of things. She inherits and collects to fill the void, arguably. What ha do we find out what happens when, when they get yeeted? What the technicalities of that entails? Or is it more of a behind a curtain kind of deal? I'm, I'm curious. Morbidly so. Caught among the fear of being almost killed by Cassius, the relief of being saved and the budding realization of how I feel towards death Rahal. I don't know if I should scream or cry or laugh hysterically. What even is my life? Before I was attacked by Cassius, I was thinking of helping death Rahal as a task. After speaking to death Rahal, that no longer feels right. With doubts warring against my emotions, I decide enough is enough, and I need to help. Ito is my first choice. He has always been helpful ever since we first met. He cares a great deal about Death Rel, and he clearly loves his sister. He would definitely be able to offer great insights. Of course, only if I manage to get my thoughts in order to ask the proper questions, that is. By default, Rubeus is my second choice. Regardless of what happened, Deathrall adored him. They clearly cared about each other a great deal and probably still do. Otherwise, Rubeus wouldn't be around here so much. They are only they are the only logical options, though I can't help but feel nervous. Is this how a mortal feels when they ask permission from someone's family to court them? Ah, Saijima, what are you thinking? Smacking my own cheeks to refocus on the task at hand, I stare at the door, debating the options. It would suck if one of them was with Death Row right now. <sighs> Research hall. Because Rubeus is the, the obvious unwilling option because f fucking scared of that kid. Uh, he he's killed us and um, could do it again. But I think he's probably the larger ticket than Ito for finding answers. Seek out, oh no, Nay said to seek out, I didn't see that. Oh Jesus, now I'm scared. 
I've run into Rubeus before in the research hall. Maybe I'd run into him again today. The chances are a bit slim, but I don't have any way of knowing the whereabouts of either him or Ito. At the very least, going to the research hall might give me a chance to get my thoughts in order. Whether I'm seeing anyone or not. Well, we know Cassius isn't gonna be in here. Do we get his wand now? <gasps> Is now the time to get his wand? <gasps> Fuck! We know it's in here. We know it's in- we know it's in here. Ah, uh, so it's empty after all. Right. Would immediately leaving seem weird? Death Row didn't really say anything when I entered her throne room, but it took a lot out of me not to blush furiously in front of her. I... I don't think I can keep a level head around her right now as I ought to do. Rather, I would just burst out saying something stupid, like, I love you. With a sigh, I sit down at one of the desks and pick up a book. This music helps, if nothing else. Time ticks by slowly, quietly. Despite being something that I have not read yet, I can't seem to get past the first page. I've never... I've never been like this before, so distracted by my own thoughts that I can't even read. I keep thinking about yesterday. I keep thinking about what I'm feeling. What if Death Row had stopped me on the way to this room? What would I have said? I don't want to ramble on and say something stupid. I'm not... I'm not ready yet. This emotion, this budding affection? Love? <laughs> this is so embarrassing! What is... Why does he have to be so quiet? Suddenly, I rub at the bruise on my hip while Rubeus only stands there, watching, judging, me with a silent scowl. Ah, crap. I'm supposed to ask him some things. Uh, you... <laughs> you scared me a little there. You have no awareness. I... Uh, what? It's only because you're so quiet. Quiet. Anyone else would say that my presence is among the loudest. It's a- it's a loud presence, but it arrives quietly. If you are ignorant enough to not notice, then... He trails off, seemingly- seeming to be lost in his thoughts. Much to my bafflement and amount of humiliation, Rubeus walk, walks towards a desk, looking like he has completely forgotten about my presence. Hey, it, at least finish your thought. Rubeus doesn't say anything. It is both infuriating and unnerving, but I don't dare to push him either. There's something about Rubeus that is just deeply unsettling now that I actually am around him in somewhat a tense situation. I raised my voice earlier because I didn't think. That's right, I don't know much about Rubeus other than through Death Rail's stored memories. Of course, the way he treats me would be completely different from the way he is around her. Very slowly, Rubeus looks at me, his blood red eyes seething with rage. Speak to me in that tone again, and you shall be eviscerated. Uh, I. weak, disruptive, useless. I do not know why you are here, and I do not care. But if you cause any more delays to Kara's plan, I shall personally see to it that there is only strife upon your path. A... a delay? I... I, I don't... I don't mean to... Your tears are meaningless. Get out of my sight. <sighs> awesome! That went well! I think we're friends now be happening you not expecting Aksan to whirl around and advance upon me so angrily I startle and stumble backwards well, what do you want what do I want what do I want Aksan calm down how can I be calm we were so close and this this creature it is not like either of you would remember anything anyway it is not like anyone would remember. 
So this is... This is something you have seen before. Perhaps I have. Then why, Shandu? Why didn't you put a stop to it before it came to pass? I did not. For even the very wise cannot see all ends. <laughs> very well. Excuse me for my outburst. I shall take my leave and make preparations for what is to come. Bowing to death, Earl Haxon retreats towards the door. I jump out of the way, shrinking at the scathing glare she throws me. It doesn't take a genius to understand why Axon is so crossed. Because of me, another person died. Rules are rules. Yes, but on a power and efficiency standpoint, Death Row should have let Finan and Cassius do whatever they wanted. Especially when Cassius was helping Death Row herself with research. Weak, destructive, useless. Rebeus is right on all accounts. Ah, uh, the general public is so difficult to please. <laughs> this fucking bitch. I fucking love her. <laughs> to, to have the temperament, just while everything is going to shit, just be like, oh my god, you guys, are really hushing my vibes right now. But fine, do what you will. Be weird. See if I can. She doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> For real, it's great. Death Roll Hum seeming more amused than anything. But then again, she has always seemed amused about everything. I don't think I've ever been able to correctly gauge her reactions or attitude towards anything. How could I claim to love her when I don't even understand anything about her? Hmm. What is with the long face, little angel? The dark sun rattle you that much? She... I... You... You should have... What? Let you die? <gasps> I... Deathrall raises a hand. I clamp my mouth shut. You are an angel. Rules are rules, are they not? That is... But... You have grown. I... I have? I have. That is true. The train and the rails were separated once again. Rules are rules. If one overlooks rules for certain pros and cons, then we would just be like the mortals, bending them for our own benefits. But... You disagree. I... I'm conflicted about this whole ordeal. Naturally. <laughs> this is not something you can come to terms with in just a few meager days. You are an angel. After all. Still... To think that you have managed to change this far. I thought it would take a lot more. Never mind that. What is the state of your grace? My grace? With everything that just happened, she... She cares enough to ask about my grace? I... Well... Regardless of how touched I am by the question, the topic itself is not something I'm too enthusiastic about. My hand goes over to my chest automatically, clutching at the flesh under my fabric. The pain is a constant. I've gotten used to it now, so it... I guess it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Have you made peace with the fact that you will eventually turn mortal here in the Onda? Then... I... I have been avoiding thinking about it. I guess if it's going to happen, then I just accept it. Right now, I have almost all basic needs for mortal to survive. I guess on a subconscious level, I'm already used to it. I think... I think the thing that bothers me most is how my grace has been... 
draining away? Like, like I'm going to fall, but not quite. Do you regret the choices you have made? The thoughts you have had? I, I don't. The truth is not always beautiful. And the truth is I was treated horribly. No amount of repressed emotions or glossing over it is going to change that. Pain spikes, but I don't even flinch. It is what it is. I realized that even if I hadn't had those thoughts, even if I didn't make the choices I had, eventually my abilities would have been traded away anyway. I would just end up a human with wings otherwise. But you do not wish to return to your heavens. Not anymore. Not anymore. I have to decide on my own path, right? I know we've spoken about this, but I've decided to make myself of use to you. It does sound like I'm just relapsing into what I know all my existence, my life, and maybe it is. I'm, I'm not going to ask you for what you want anymore. I'm going to find out how I can be of help, and I will do my best. Because this is my own selfish choice. So please, please wait for me. Hmm. <laughs> do as you please. <sighs> Mate, I don't even fucking know anymore. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it could have gone bad with Ito, I guess. So it's probably best we didn't go and talk to him and then not be friends with him anymore. Maybe? Out of curiosity. Oh, I'm very curious. I'm very curious. Well, yeah, not really much point asking Cassius anymore. Um. Oh. Wow, wow. All right. Fuck. Ultimately, it really was best just to talk to Death Row. Resolves made, I stand over my memory pillar with newfound confidence. Let's do this. Whoa! This place! This floor is amazing! Thank you for taking me! My caretaker chuckles, putting my hand in hers. No need to thank me. This is my duty, after all. Have a look around as much as you would like. You are going to be transferred to this layer of heaven soon, after all. All right! This is my first time away from the nursery. I will be starting my time at the secondary academy in my apprenticeship soon. I am graduating at the top of the class in the nursery. Being top of the scholar rank is no small feat, and there are a lot more of us in this generation. Or so I've heard. Therefore, I have earned myself a one-on-one -on -one trip here with the supervisor instead of a group visit with the rest of my class. It is definitely an exciting opportunity to learn. The caretaker I'm assigned to today is one of my favorites from the nursery, too. She's always patient and always quick to explain anything I ask or don't understand. Ah, so there are a lot more floors to this lair than the nursery, right? That is correct. Do you remember what comes after an apprenticeship? Of course! We get to apply for junior positions! <laughs> that is correct. There are several facilities ahead, headed by higher authorities here. One of which is the Heavenly Archives under the authority of the Archangel Rachel, Keeper of Mysteries! <laughs> correct again. <laughs> my, you are a very studious one, aren't you, Saijima? I do my best not to disappoint. That you should. For being such a good, studious little one, I shall reward you with something. Come, Saijima. Eagerly taking her offered hand, I follow my caretaker to a different section of the Slayer, happily taking in all the sights I have never seen before. <laughs> Nerd! <laughs> it was, that was me in high school, honestly. This is... Oh, goodness and grace! This is the Heavenly Archives! Of course it is! I can recognize the glorious sight anywhere. I've only ever dreamed of working here when I get the qualifications for a junior after all. 
Seeing the archives with my own eyes brings a joy to my heart that I can barely contain. I suppose we can't, um, take a peek inside, can we? No, little one. You would need a pass for this. <sighs> I know. But the wait should not be long, so do not be disheartened. Yes! All top-class scholars from the nursery get a pass for the archives upon enrollment in the secondary academy! I absolutely can't wait! My caretaker chuckles. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, young one. Uh, of course! But I can understand your excitement. Here. Oh, goodness! The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis! What a strange title. But... Do you... Is this from the archives? Indeed it is. So read quickly, alright? I still need to return it, you know. Clutching the book to my chest, I beam up at her. I will! Thank you so much! This is the best day ever. Is this, is this game just based on my high school experiences? Is one of the books we read at Extreme Extremist High School, Extremist Christian High School, was *The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe*, because it told it was more more Jesus, more ways to be like Jesus is fucking everywhere. You know this lion? Yeah, that's God. And if you eat Turkish delights given to you by Tilda Swinton, God's gonna die. <laughs> it's like ah. Yeah, that's how Christianity works, right? Even some of my Christian friends were like, oh, no, nah, that's, that's some, that's some bull. <laughs> God, God, God didn't die because of that. But like... Ugh. Memory registered. Sajim is available exchange, too. That... That wasn't too bad. I have two memories ready to be exchanged now. And since I started it out with something not so extreme, I think I can keep going. Despite my bravado, I know this memory is not gonna leave me in a good state after. It is, after all, probably my most upsetting memory. Closing my eyes, I twist the key, bracing myself for the pain to come. Oh, <gasps> Lily! We don't... Do we know her about from this playthrough? It was a different one we saw her. We didn't. We didn't, I don't know who the fuck she is though. Sounds why I hate Turkish delight. No, it all makes sense. I'm saving God's life. Thank you, elders. Literally doing the Lord's work. Lily, Lily, I've already forgotten her voice. Shit. Um, Sajima, over here. Oh no, she's got fucking. She's got Nino Kuni mum voice. She gonna die. <laughs> I skid to a stop before my friend beaming up at her. Ah, you got here first again. I did, yes. How was your duty today? Ah, it was so-so. I didn't get into any trouble if that's what you're asking. Ah, they really should cut you some slack. You've been working so hard. Yeah, but I'm not doing things perfectly as expected. But that's very unfair. You've still, you're, you're still just a novice. They can't expect you to just get everything right from the get-go. I smile at her. It's all right, Lily. I know there's still a lot I need to learn. But Lily has always been so kind and caring. She's always been frustrated on my behalf whenever I'm assigned punishment. She always lends an ear to my sniffling rants, always gives such good advice and so many amazing stories about the world. I smile again and pat her hand. It's all right, Lily. I just need some more time to practice. That's it. I'm going to need that when I get to the archives, after all. And you'll make a wonderful scribe, I'm sure. <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> but we're getting off track. Tell me about your latest task. Lily works at the music history part of the archives. While my specialty has not much to do with it, it's always exciting to hear about the newest pieces her department has curated or the meaning behind certain songs. And if I'm lucky, Lily would sing for me too. She has a wonderful voice. Uh, there's nothing interesting today. Sorry. Someone missed a delivery, so we have to reschedule a project to later. 
Oh, wow. So something like that happens in the archives too, huh? More often than you would think. The problem is how vast and sprawling the archives departments are. Deliverers often get lost among the complexes. It doesn't help when they are always when they always add more to their facilities. <sighs> I'm sorry you had a bad day. <sighs> it's all right. I mean, this won't slow down our progress by much. There is still some reconstruction and restoration work to be done, and there's some translation work as well. I wish I could help you. I know your talent would be super helpful right now, but. I'm sure after your training, you'll be with us in no time. I'll endeavor to meet your expectation. Lily looks like she's about to say something, but stops herself. She's sometimes like that. Despite her confidence, Lily seems to doubt her words often. But that's another quality I like about her. How careful she is with her words. Lily would never say or do anything to hurt me, and that's something I'll always be grateful for. Oh! She suddenly exclaims, looking down at her device. I'm so sorry, Sajima, but I have something that I have to take care of right now. Another emergency? Oh, you can say that. I'll see you in the afternoon, yeah? You said you have a book you want to show me. Of course! See you! Oh, yay! Another pack of characters. Sweet. Elegantly brushing back her vibrant hair, Lily waves at me before flying away. Alright, let's get back to the tasks then. If I can finish them early enough, then I can go see Lily. No. 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 I run as fast as my legs could carry me, hating how small and weak my wings are more and more. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. The terrace is empty. No. Lily is always punctual. She always makes a point to be early. But Lily is not there. It, it can't be true. What are you doing, Sajma? I jump, clutching at the railing as my caretaker suddenly lands before me, critical eyes surveying my tear-stained face. I... I'm waiting for her. Waiting for Lu Do not mention that name. She is not coming for you. She deceived you, child. But- It would be best to take this as a lesson. You are far too trusting and your emotions got the better of you again. Mourning for such a poisonous creature is unnecessary and forbidden. You would do well to refocus on your tasks. I heard your grades are slipping. Thank the Lord we chased that wretched woman out before she could corrupt you any further. So it is true then. Lily. Lily really is Lilith. What? What is going to happen to her? That poisonous snake has always been and will always be a thorn in our side. She will certainly be hunted down. The light of God shall make her answer for her crimes. Now come. The Protection and Justice Departments have some questions for you. You will do well to answer them truthfully. But I... I know nothing about her her activities that is something oh that is something for the authorities to hear whatever protest of might have died in my throat as the caretaker grabs my arm and marches me away a sob cracks out of my mouth to which i'm immediately shushed for so this is how it feels to be abandoned betrayed used and yet and yet, in some corner of my treacherous heart, I still wish to see the telltale glimmer of golden wings, sun-kissed hair, and that unwaveringly kind smile. Take me back to the Elder. Oh boy. Oh boy. Memory registered. Saijima's available exchange. Three. Ooh. I 
slumped to the ground, dejected. I do want to cry, but I can't find the strength to. Moreover, for the first time in a very long time, I wonder what really happened to Lily. Lilith. They never told me what she really did, other than managing to slip past Heaven's Guard and fool everyone. She even managed to escape. What a mess. I curl up my knees and tuck them under my chin. Surprisingly, I'm not reacting so badly to reliving that memory. Lily... Lilith was the first one to ever get so close to me personally. I've had my fair share of Kate, caretakers and superiors, nursery and academy, academy fellow students, but never a friend like her before. I was in a bit... I was in a particularly bad spot when I first met Lilith, too. I almost flunked most of my classes at the secondary academy and barely got accepted as a novice after failing the entrance test several times. I didn't know what to do about my failures. The harder I tried to study to be more diligent, the worse I failed. If she hadn't been by my side, I don't know how my mental state would have turned out. Even if it was all a lie. I can't deny that she was the nicest to me when everyone was ready to drop me to a lower layer. Yes, those who fail so spectacularly like I did would have been delegated to oversee mortal souls. A troublesome job for troublesome angels, or so I was told. The way I was raised is pretty screwed up. Huh. I wish I knew what happened to Lilith. I'll never find out. Right. Right. Shakily, I stand up and look down at the memory pillar. Since I didn't react too strongly to seeing this memory, maybe I should go for one more. It would be the last one I need to get to see the memory from death row. Should I submit a happy memory this time? Though I don't think I can feel anything better than forlorn, even after a happy memory. Hmm. My mind wanders and I find myself theorizing, which probably isn't a very good thing. This place just needs a memory, doesn't it? A memory that elicits strong emotions or is important in some way. By that logic, wouldn't it accept memories that happened in the yonder too? Would it accept memories of me watching another's memory? Maybe the latter is pushing it, but the former is totally feasible, right? If that's the case, then the memory of my 28th day here would count, right? Maybe I'm trying to be a little too smart for my own good here, but... Letting out a long exhale, I turn the key once more, ready for the onslaught of emotions. What is it with people grabbing your arm? T semblance of control from other people onto us, I would say. And, you know, physically and emotionally, we're small, you know? Um, if people feel a lack of control or power, that's what'll get them to do what they want. Or if that quote-unquote lesser being is not adhering to the way that they want them to behave. It's a very easy and literal way to <laughs> regain that semblance. Memory registered. Sajima's available exchange. Four. Was day 28 when Cassius attacked? Or was it when we were like, we love you? I collapsed to the floor. Oh, she probably tell us. <laughs> Gasping and heaving. A headache presses tightly behind my eyes, and my entire body is racked with uncontrollable shivers. The general conversation with Dethro after the inc incident with Cassius didn't soothe the raging terror within me. I can't even cry. How in all seven heavens did I go about the last few days like that didn't happen? Like, someone didn't just try to kill me? Like, I wasn't this close to death! I thought I had changed for the better, I really thought I did, but but 
I really am just that good at glossing over traumas, huh? Like the feathers scattering all around me right now in the sputtering light of my halo. I really have just been glossing over everything until it comes crashing down. By the Lord. How did I manage not to think about the fact Cassius was really going to kill me and focus on every other thing? And then it clicks. It is how I was taught. I was taught to suppress all emotions in favor of the tasks and duties at hand. I was taught to overlook my own feelings to serve better. I might express myself more freely now. I might be making my own little choices. I might be conducting myself unorthodoxly and thinking somewhat differently from how I was. But at the very core of it, I am still the same. It makes me think about what I said to Death Roll yesterday. Because this is my own selfish choice. Is this the way I choose to cope now? Maybe Ruby is right. Maybe I really don't have any self-awareness. I thought I had become bolder and braver. When in truth, I have only become more clueless. Am I really changing for the better? Or am I just taking bits and pieces of what I think is progress as a win, while ignoring the very core of my problems? I walk towards Death Row's memory pillar, heart thudding and heavily in my chest. My hand feels clammy around the key. Something hot blooms in my chest as I stand before the pillar. For the life of me, I can't tell if it's excitement or anxiety. What am I going to find? Before turning the key, I hesitate. Do I really deserve to see this? After blindly charging forward and making such a foolish declaration? I look over my pillar and feel a sharp twinge of pain in my chest. But I have come this far. I don't want to just give up. Maybe that's me being selfish again. Oh, man. Our main character lived most of her life about all of it, really, with everyone in her life controlling her, being told what to do, and when she didn't want to do something or fell out of line, she was forced back into what others want. And when she finally has freedom, she doesn't know what to do about it. She denies putting Death Roll in the same place as her god while doing it at the same time. Yeah, because she doesn't know what else to do. She is a tragic character. and But I think, I mean, at least for me, there are definitely a lot of elements of it that I can completely relate to. And that resonates, I think. Um, and seeing it represented so well is really refreshing. Because sometimes it's just like, oh, I just want to be the goody two shoes. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Blah. Um, but no, it's a really deep and interesting look into that kind of mindset, and it's it's fully understandable. You know, it's frustrating, and she's frustrated herself by it, and understanding that she keeps falling back into it. But if it's so learned with such significant consequence or what feels like such a significant consequence because um like i think for her as well like when you when she does or has taken a step out of line it's there are other things that kind of bank on her fears or her likes that they kind of use to get her back in line maybe even unknowingly um or even knowingly you know like You've worked this hard to become an archivist. You're going to really sacrifice everything because you want to be free in this moment. It's like, eh, no. <laughs> um, and it's understandable to resort back to that. It's fully understandable to resort back to that. Uh, she doesn't have any guidance and she doesn't know what to do and she hates that but can't do anything about it. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to break out of. It's a really fucking hard thing to break out of. I joke about extremist christian high school a lot um and 
equally I've said before openly, like I know I'm still feeling a lot of the resonations of it still, <laughs> ten years later. Um, and not even necessarily from the religious side, not even, you know, regarding a breakdown of Christian faith as it is, like, at all. I'm not at all disrespectful of it, but as with any form of control and, um, yeah, control <laughs> that you find in academia and a lot, of, a lot of other places and religion and everything, like, it's a very encompassing thing and those are very formative years. And if you come out of that into a world where that very same um, kind of obedience that is so praised in those environments then becomes seen as something to be suspicious of or something to um, suddenly seen as a negative, potentially because there are generations that have avoided that themselves and then see it as a red flag, it becomes a very difficult thing to try and circumnavigate. You know, it's... You break out of it, you, and there's just a world there. And you don't get the rules, and you kind of want the rules, and... Yeah, it's... It's difficult, and I think this is a really... well-presented reflection of that kind of situation. Uh, try to write her so she can be relatable, not just in a religious standpoint, but in a more controlling domestic situation as well. Absolutely! Abso and you absolutely th get that. Like, none of it feel- it all feels like thematically, obviously, uh, more religion-based, but it doesn't- it doesn't feel like you're just being like, wow, Christians be so controlling. Like, because <laughs> it- because it's not. Um, and, um, it- yeah, it definitely feels like it's a self-agency, self-preservation thing. Um, an external, just environment, fashion, um, not just spirituality, but also just values and beliefs and virtues. Yeah, Nay, Nay's the one of the devs for the game. <laughs> the wonderful Nay is what is the writer, I believe, the main writer for the game. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> But yeah, it's, no, it's really, really interesting. And I think, yeah, it's definitely part of the reason I'm so thoroughly enjoying it and getting into it, especially from like a voice acting perspective and just narratively, I'm like very, very interested in it. And like she kind of mentioned the other day, seeing into some of Death Death memories, even though their situations and their present selves are different, there is some kind of resounding similarity between them where they both have some form of void that needs to be filled um, whether that's internally or externally yeah it's really cool it's very very cool and once again if you're enjoying it <laughs> link, in, link in the chat um, you can go and check out the game right now on Steam and Itch free demo. I was provided with a key, so this is sponsored, so just to be just to be open and honest, but honestly like say what you will, like be like, "Oh, keys, keys in it. She's she wants to sell it. Like she's been given a copy, whatever." No, like I'm genuinely really fucking enjoying this. <laughs> Again, like, if me streaming it for six and a half hours yesterday doesn't prove that in a heat wave, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, yeah, I, it's a fucking honor to be part of a game like this with the, these kind of messages and explorations of health and mental health and all sorts of things, all sorts of things. It's really, really interesting and yeah. I'm still intrigued as to where it's gonna go. <laughs> Recognize. Sajma. Angel. Requesting access. The void. Access granted. Query. Memory request? Despite the whirlwind of emotions within me, my request comes out barely above a whisper. Show me. Promise. Requesting. Promise. Query. This request will empty all available exchanges. Proceed. 
Yes. Request granted. I close my eyes and fall into the darkness. It's told this story is very tough to read because of the whole mental issues. I think it's... I wouldn't say it's... I mean, it's going to change from person to person based on experiences and stuff. Um, for me, it's... I've seen other stuff that's... Oh, I'm scared of this music. Uh, <laughs> I've played stuff that's kind of explored or tried to explore similar themes and it's felt more exhausting. Um, it can be tough because it addresses a lot of very close to the chest topics and issues for people, I think. But I think compared to a lot of stuff that has touched on these kind of themes so continuously, I think it's been one of the easier experiences and one of the more cathartic experiences where I found others kind of feel not bad or shallow, but kind of very straightforward. This very much kind of circumnavigates all of the different levels of it and um, the kind of areas where it feels like it um, contradicts itself and the moments of weird peace and all of it. And it, I can definitely see that being difficult for that reason, just because it's kind of represented, but it, yeah, none of it feels exploitative or exploited or yeah, if that makes sense. I think that's why I'm finding it maybe easier to play through, but yeah, I could totally understand people like having a bit of a tough time with it, but not, yeah, not for, I mean, yeah, it's going to change depending on people, so it's not for me to say really how other people would or shouldn't experience it, but yeah. I can I can understand that. Yeah, I can totally understand that. But not for lack of good writing, I would say, if that makes sense. This fall to death roll's memory feels somewhat different. The fall is longer. The darkness seems colder. The emptiness is there, a staple aside from the one memory where death roll still had her emotions intact. There's still hope. That's what I was meant, meant, trying to say. But it is strange somehow. I can't put my finger on why it feels strange, but it is there and it frustrates me. That too melts away, as with all emotions in Death Row's memories. Melts away with the red sunset. Red. He knew the color red so early in life. It was in the heavy drapes of his bed. The stiff coarseness of his floor and the eternal sunset. It was the colour of his father's whip, stained whistling. It was in his mother's eyes, wild like her hoarse scream. It was in the nails of his grandmother, clutching until his pale arm matched them in colour. Memories might fade but the redness remained bruised in a vast thatch of his mind. He hated red. Yet I made us live here. He hated it, and fell in love with it all the same. Was I cruel to do so? Was I trying to force him to heal, to disassociate? If so, he never said a word, never complained, never was sullen. As long as we all stayed together, even though it was me who took him apart and reformed him to what he is now. And yet, it was me who ruined it. What a terrible sister I am. There is no remorse within me as I push the gate open. They made their choices. I made mine. Perhaps they had foreseen the consequence that followed. Perhaps they did not. Either way, none can escape me now. Everything is immaculate, and empty, mostly empty. 
The structure has never made any sense. A domestic home in a world scorched by a red sun. A home full of the greatest terrors in all existences. Or so one would claim. Nito has always been amused by this. Chaos amuses him. I never understood him, for I was a being of order. I never understood him. Until chaos became me. But then I can never become amused again. I really have to put that child through so much hardship. Hmm. But I can no longer say sorry to him. Not with the sincerity that he deserves. The variables are slim. But maybe, just maybe... I can apologize to him when the loop finally ends. Ruby adores this room. Oh, fuck. Perhaps I should keep it. He is bound to visit after all, though I doubt he would ever set foot in it. That child never deals with heart well. The most impulsive, yet the sweetest of all. I never wanted to make him cry, and yet I did. A truly abhorrent sister. For selfish reasons, I made my choices. I willingly destroyed everything we had. I erased what could have been our future together. I ate my heart. Just so my love could survive. Just so my love may return, one day. I do not feel any regret, even after breaking his heart. Even after breaking all of their hearts. I cannot feel any regret. I remember the last words I spoke to them, before it all happened. I ate my heart. But I never wish to break yours. <laughs> How poetic. I did not even say sorry. My love. My love. The sky is falling down today. I will bring down the sun today. Everything will see. Everything will fall into motion as I will it. Everything will wait as I do. We danced here once. It is here that we have shared so many laughs, where we existed without worry. Here is also where he waited, where he spiralled when I was gone. When I was scattered with almost no hope of returning. Where he began meticulously gathering every piece of me and brought me back to his side. And here, here, I shall begin my weaving. This is where I stopped. If I could still feel dread, I would have. But I turned to look anyway. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Why must they? Take you away! Why must we be constantly separated? Why? 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 I love you. I love you. Why could they not just leave us alone? I. Everything. With these hands I have destroyed. Everything. 
with my power I have eviscerated all who opposed us to every step of the way until there is not even a fraction of them left to deny defy us in the future. Still. Still. It was not enough to restore you. There is something I am missing, and I shall search for it across all that is as you have once done for me. And I shall hold on to what I can of you, and to the purest fragment left of me. I will keep our promise. And I will wait, over and over again, until we are reunited once more. Endlessly waiting, endlessly dreaming under the eternal night, <laughs> until the moon burns red. And the stars all die. Until darkness blackens the sky. Scale. I love you, Scale. The light is retreating. The shroud is pulled over the sky. This is it. This is where I shall wait. This is where we will meet again. I will see you in the yonder. Heart of my heart. I cry as I fall. Fall and fall and fall. As death rolls, declarations of love echo in my head. But that love is not for me. Memory exchanged. Sajima's available exchange. Zero. The ground is cold where I fall. Is me. No one will. How does it feel to love someone who does not love you back? I am stupid. <laughs> so stupid. Whatever I feel towards death row, even if it really is love, isn't the kind of love one should impose upon another. It isn't the kind of love death row has towards scale. It should have been obvious. It should have been so obvious. I was replacing my god with the image of Death Row. All powerful, all knowing, and is kind to me despite my flaws. Unbiased. She is the ideal, supreme one. Pain erupts in my chest at the realization that the truth I have been so carelessly ignorant of. A flurry of feathers falls down before me. I don't have much time. Forcing myself to my feet, I ignoring the trembling of my entire body and my screaming heart, I run. Hello, little angel. Dethera. I pause, not knowing how to proceed after what I just saw, after my own rationalizing. God, I am such a fool. Unnerved under her piercing eyes and the weight of my own emotions, I flounder. What am I even going to tell her? What am I going to say? It would have been much easier if Deathrell would just pluck the words from my mind, but I know she wouldn't do that. I want to hold my head in my hand and cry. Do I feel affection for her? I do, of, of course I do. 
Do I want affection from her? I think I always have. But is it the same kind of love I thought it was? I don't know. That uncertainty hurts more than anything I've ever experienced. Doesn't matter how many books I've read, how many people I've met. I don't know how to define love. Unbidden, a choked sob comes out of me. What kind of miserable existence is that? Death Row, I... Yes? Sniffling, I scrub my tears away furiously. I'm... I'm sorry. I just don't know what to say, really. I... I... I saw your memory. I promise. Alright. Is that it? Is that all? You really aren't phased by anything, are you? Why should I be? I did put out those wi memories willingly, knowing others can access them. <laughs> if I had cared for the opinions of everyone who has seen that memory, then I would not have been here right now. That's true. You've said something like that before. I have. But that aside, what is it you want, little angel? I... I... I hang my head, just in time to see more feathers fluttering to the ground. What I want, huh? I want more time. I want to stay in the yonder. I want to figure out how I can get better, how I can be of use to Death Earl. I want her to look at me and feel... something. I want all of that. I don't want to remain clueless. I don't want to put Death Earl in a place of my god, someone who never cared for me. I don't want to fall just because I wanted to be treated better. I don't want to go home and face the consequences that I don't deserve. I want better. But that's not something I can get. Not right here, right now. I think about everything that has been happening. I think about my current status, about what I just saw in Death Roll's memory. In the jumbled mess that is my mind, there is suddenly a flickering dot of clarity. There is no time left. On this path, that is. Oh, The little angel has figured out something. I think you are giving me too much credit. I don't think I figured out anything. But I might just have realized what I can do about what I want. And is that not half the battle? You can say so. Swallowing dryly, I try to organize my thoughts as quickly as possible, searching through the fragments of pain, ignorance, and cowardice to sketch the outline of a picture. The memories. They are meant to be preserved forever, right? For as long as I will the yonder to exist. Yes. Interesting choice of words. Ha ha ha! Don't mind me, please. I do not. Keep going. Right. L let's say, someone who leaves the yonder by whatever means there is, and they forget their memories. If they have stored their memories in the hall, the memories would be there regardless, right? Indeed. Right, so this might be a stupid question, but... Can one view their own memories? No, of course they can. <laughs> then... The sudden sound of thunder makes me jump. And bothered as ever, Deathrell tilts her head backwards and gazes up at the moon. Ah... Uh, it seems neither condition is met. Before I can ask her anything, the door is thrown open and Rubea strides in, his swishing cape shifting like sh liquid shadow. Oh no... Kara. Hello, Ruby. It's happening faster than normal. Is it? Quite frankly, I've lost track of time. You... Rubeus glances down at if it's his ever-present pocket watch, then up at Death Row. His heavy scowl returns, but there isn't just rage in his eyes. There is anguish there, too. You really... 
You really aren't going to stop this. I made a promise, Ruby. I'm not going to stop. Until the moon burns red and the stars... Stop it! This shout is accentuated by the rolling thunder. Rubeus briskly steps forward, grabbing Deathrow by the arms. Stop it! Stop this! You can't keep doing this! Go home! We have to go home! Deathrell's smile remains gentle, even though Rubeus is shaking her almost violently, yelling at her until his voice begins cracking. He's not coming back! Please, you have to go home! If this continues, we... I can't go through this again! This is home, Ruby. Gently, she places a hand upon his cheek. I made a choice, Ruby. I am sorry it was so selfish. He slumps to his knees, hugging death rolls as he cries. Her hand threads gentle through his hair. Her, her wide sleeves drape over him, blocking him from my view. Slowly, amidst the rumbling thunder, his cries fade away. Eventually, Deathrell opens her arms again, but Rubeus is nowhere in sight. Where? I am a terrible sister. Hmm. Clenching my fists, I make up my mind. I love you, Deathrell. Silence follows my declaration. Another rumbling noise makes me shift uncomfortably. But I can't back down now. I... I don't know what kind of love that is, and I know it isn't something you're looking for. I haven't had much time to think about it, either. I, I know that sounds shallow, and I know I'm being ridiculous for saying all this. Of course, this is just something out of my own selfish desire. You, of course, don't have to do anything about it, but I just want you to know. S so... Is that so? <laughs> I am glad, then. <gasps> Thank you... for everything. A huge weight is lifted off my chest. So relieved I'm not even aware when the entire hall trembles. Bowing to death row, I continue putting every ounce of sincerity into my voice. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how things are supposed to end. But if we are ever to meet again, I promise I will be better. I will figure out what kind of love I have for you, and I will figure out my true path next time. This, I promise. Rumbling and cracking sounds come again, more insistent this time. I thought my time was short, but it is much shorter than I expected. I... I will be making preparations now. Goodbye, Saijima. Perhaps when we next meet, if my heart is still with me, then I can love you the way you deserve. <laughs> Thank you again for everything. Bowing to her one last time, I quickly turn towards the door and run. Everything is falling apart. Large chunks of decorated marbles lie shattered on the floor, and the glass windows have all but fallen to pieces. Yet the pillars are still there, standing whole amidst the destruction. Though wary of the trembling ground and the falling debris, I know I have no time left for hesitation. Come on, Sashima, come on! With everything that I have, I vault towards my pillar. <laughs> A tile gives out under my feet, sending me sprawling to the ground. Shit, shit! <laughs> Upon standing, a shockwave sends me flailing again. So off-balanced, I can't break my fall. My chin slams onto the ground hard enough for me to see stars. G 
<laughs> a chunk of the ceiling drops down where my leg was just a second ago. Get up! Get up! Clawing and pushing through the debris, I scramble on all fours to get to my pillar. Desperation soaks into my entire being. My memory pillar, which is only a few dozen steps away from the door, seems so far away now amidst the crumbling hall. No! I made a promise! I made a promise to her! With the last of my strength, I leap. My wings flare open, and while I don't quite manage to fly, they propel me far enough to grab hold of my pillar. <laughs> My hand shakes with the tremors of the hall, clammy fingers wrapping around the tiny key in my pocket. Distantly, I feel the ground beneath me falling away, but the key is in the socket. I twist it with all my might. Then, the world is awash in light. I did it. I did it. If we ever see each other again. I promise I will love you the way you deserve. <gasps> Fuck! Oh uh, <laughs> my god! BRB, lying down real quick. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you for the oolong. Oh my god, I forgot about more lines! I'm running in- I'm running so fast. Should we start from the beginning and then go? Will- will she remember this? Do we- do we go back to the beginning? And then go up to that point, and then go to the Hall of Memory, but we have to remember how to not get killed by her first? Fuck. Oh my god. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> I need some fucking non bread. Hold up. <laughs> I'm gonna give this Indian takeaway that we had today a really good recommendation. Because usually after takeaways, I'm like super burpy. And I can't voice act for shit. But I've been, a I've been able to do all of this after a fucking Indian takeaway. That's the fucking skill. At home. Oh my god. That was a good ending! That was a good ending! Is that romancing her? Ah, that's what I figure. That's what I figure. Oh my god, I forgot about that line! I'm glad- I'm glad Past Key did it, because I- I was already kind of crying. <laughs> I had to carry it on after, but... <laughs> Oh my god! I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up. Oh boy! That was the lounge! That's the- yonder world is the house! And then, and then, and then she, she made, she made it the yonder, and she knew the thing he would hate her for, but she didn't, and then he's mad. And... So it's a cyclical thing. There is a 13 on his clock. We know that from a different playthrough. How? Oh. 
My fucking god. Yeah, and apologies if you're still here, soldier boy. We were in a little bit of a moment. I'm oh, sorry, soldier, not actual soldier boy. If you were still here, thank you very much for coming by. I hope you're doing well today. You came in at a moment of very extreme immersion. Angie! 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 <laughs> have some naan. Everyone who wants some Pishwari naan can have some Pishwari naan. There we go. We're having a Pishwari naan emotional break. We just got- we've got another two endings today. Neither of them bad. Angie! <laughs> just need- just need to yell a bit more. <laughs> Are you talking about me or- or Death Roll or both there, Nate? Because I'm- I definitely apply to that right now. Oh my god. Oh my god! So my theory... Oh. Is that... That's what the non's for. <laughs> it's emotional non-bread. Is... Man! Fuck. <laughs> we'll- we'll need- Alright, so what- what happened? What hap- what hap- <laughs> What- what have the last almost three hours been? We- 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 we went back in time thanks to Death Arrow. Um. Because Keldon was a dick. Then we got an ending. Then we went back again. And we didn't lie to Ito. And we said, fuck you to whatever Keldon was talking about. With her. And then he was being a Marty bitch when we went to the Hall of Memories. But he didn't make us doubt ourselves so much. So we went back into our memories and we learned about Lily and we and we and we <laughs> and we <laughs> and we learned about um ourselves again and then we learned a bit more about and then and then and then we love death row and then I'm not even on how Um, um. <laughs> so we found out the promise and then we confessed to death Rail just as the cycle was happening the loop and then how <laughs> And then I forgot that line I did. Which made everything way sadder. I knew it was a sad line when I recorded it, but I didn't know the context, and now I'm really fucked up. <laughs> like, why am I yelling I love you? Oh, no. <laughs> and then... And then she was like, maybe... In another life, I'd be a girl. And then we put all our memories into the thing. And then... It ended... So if we... We, we, if we go back... We, if we could turn back time, if we could find a way, we can go back... To the... Maybe we don't have to go from the beginning. Maybe we can just go from the memory hall and then go into it and be like, Brr, we already have entries? Brr, what? And then we can... And then we can go in and remember everything and then tell her. But I don't know if we need to go back to the beginning for that. Because <laughs> if we go back to the beginning, we have to try and remember how to avoid getting murdered by her. And also Cassius is dead? And also, Finn is dead. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh man! 
You think you broke me a little? It's a good broke. This is a good broke. It's a good- it's a very good broke. In all fairness, I am known as the heartbreaker by the people who play our game. I feel that. I resonate with that. I give it a big thumbs up. In a good way. Uh, like I said the other day, I love having my heart broken. If it's done really well by a game, I'm here for it. <laughs> And this is one of those times. I'm not like fully broken, I'm just like brr, My brain is brr, full engine mode. Oh my god. And for those who missed it, Angie is another one of the wonderful devs on this game. Got the lovely, lovely, lovely dev ladies here. Lovely dev folks. My apologies, I do not want to judge. In all fairness, I'm- oh, I read that already. I can't- see, I can't- uh, <laughs> Heartbreaker sounds like a wrestler or a really cool weapon. Both, yeah. <laughs> they- the weapon and the wrestler. <laughs> had that- uh, and had that the other day too with the line. Oh, finally getting context? Yeah. It's been most of the lines? Like- <sighs> What was- there was one yesterday that I think was like the biggest- Oh, I can't remember what it was, but... There have been a- yeah, there have been a few. Yeah, I love you one. That made sense, but I didn't know if that was going to be for the player, if it was going to be for someone else, like... Ah. And I also forgot about its existence until it popped up just now and broke my heart again. <sighs> Fuck. Has Khan done this playthrough yet? I don't think Khan's tried to remember this yet, has he? <laughs> we'll go romance him after this and be like, man, you were so much easier. Does he know he dies? Are there multiple timelines where he dies? Or are we just gonna be like, hey, sorry, Cam. How'd the stream go? Oh my god, well, um, you died. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I take back those words who uh, that have hurt you. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you quote, just quote Cher? I think Cher quoted me, but yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just right. Brr. Brain. Brain. Noom. This is some near brain right now. <laughs> Making more chicken noises than death roll at this point. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He's been through most of Cass's route in one of Axan's. Okay. Oh my god. You guys are going deep and broad as well, which I really appreciate. Some, guy, some games is like, you can romance this guy. And that, that, this is the ending where you romance him and it goes well. This is the game where you romance him and, it, and you die. And it's cool and it works and I understand branching narratives like, Jesus Christ, it's a lot of... A lot of wrangling for a branching narrative. Um, so I appreciate, like, how many routes there are through this. We've experienced quite a lot just trying to romance Deathrow, <laughs> let alone any of the other characters. Oh, man. You believe? Ah, I gotcha. <sighs> right. So. God damn. I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. See, what I forgot to do with though is check our relationship status with her. I don't know if I should or not. I'm curious. I'm curious. Um, oh, fuck. Yeah, let's make that mistake again. Let's skip really, really far. Really, 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 really far. Really, 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 what if we go here? Wait, 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 wait. Just love me. <laughs> love me! <laughs> okay. Um, fuck. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like one of those little rabbits that just like stomps when he's frustrated. Cause, but not out of frustration. I just like... I just need to... Need answers. Um... Look. Um, brr. <laughs> Let me know when Can is at this bit, please. Oh my god. Just any of this route. This route is fucking what? I don't even want to know what the other routes are like. This is wild. Um. <laughs> is it this one or the next one? Huh. Unlock that bitch. 
Skibidi-doo. I don't know, man. Maybe Okay. Uh, oh shit. I don't remember which one I chose. Uh, Beast Power. Beast Power? Beast Power. Yeah, no, I, I figured that the the points only change with choice choices. Uh, stay or hall of memory. Oh shit, I loaded the wrong one. I don't know what I need to do with this. Uh, uh, this one. Yeah. Hall of memory. Where's my memories? Memories. Fuck off. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that happened. Oh god. Maybe we need to start from the beginning. Should we start from the beginning? Ah. Oh. <laughs> ah. But is it a different... Maybe we have to... Do we name ourselves the same? <gasps> do we name ourselves the same? Is that part of it? Did I spell it right? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> what a mistake we made. <laughs> no! Oh well, close enough. Dun, 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 dun. I forgot which one you gotta pick. Fuck. Are you so eager to wipe yourself out of existence? Um. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's get backwards for chaos. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Oh, I don't remember how to. I don't remember how we got through it. <laughs> I'm very polite, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, no. Um, no. 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 <laughs> um. <gasps> Fuck. No, go back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an option. This isn't cheating, because there are many routes. Unseen text. No. Um. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. I just gotta remember. It's fine. I remember. I remember everything. Two for two on the first. Fuck. <laughs> okay. First. First place. Um. Would I like a small hint to help me pick choices? In terms of getting back to the point we were at? Or not? <laughs> Um, uh, 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 I suppose I'm not alone here. Um, 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 what's the question? I'm not afraid of some of the words you did. Yeah, that fucked me up. It was an interesting way of... Um, yeah, I'll take a dip on that. I'll take a dip on that. Oh, wait, I can just go auto, can't I? Oh, no, never mind. It was, it was a different thing. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. Oh, I did. I didn't ask because that's the stupid thing to do. We always chose the stupid thing to do. Yeah. Whoops. Stupid thing to do. Your affection meters only change after you make a choice, and you can rewind back bef to before them. Okay. That feels like cheating, though. Um, make life hard for myself. <laughs> well, bonk. Um. Um. Uh, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, I'll go out. 
Um, should we pick up where we left off? Yeah. Bet, babe. <laughs> Udon! We will know you one day. Ask. Nope. We did a smart one time. We beam. Hey. Me and my stupid mouth. Oh, it's a bad habit. Remember that. I'm stupid. Make different choices from there. Oh, that's a good point, actually. That's a good point, actually. That's a way better point. <laughs> I'm just just become a speedrunner. I'm like, I remember exactly all the choices you need for Death or Al to not marry the. So that's to there. Rot? <clears throat> yeah, it's fine. Um, nothing changed when we went. Did it? <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Bye! And it starts by contributing. <clears throat> Jesus! <clears throat> And it starts by contributing Jesus, something, even if somewhat orth unorthodoxly. Perhaps my memories won't equate to much, but it still means I would be giving back something to the Yonder. Besides, I want to get to know Deathrow better. I've always been so- Oh, so this is before we were like, oh, we can- You want us to look in- You're okay with us looking into your memories? Okay, we're just gonna- We're just gonna assume that. <laughs> Like, we've been here before or something, wink. Bes <laughs> Besides, I want to get to know Jethro better. I've already read this. And now I can get to know her be better without intruding upon her time. Perhaps then I can get over my own reservations about speaking to her again. Perhaps then I can feel like I'm worthy of her attention. The cold air of this hall was jarring to me at first. Now it is almost soothing against my stinging eyes and too warm skin. Wait! Oh, n wait! No, is fuck is fucking Ruby in here? Because otherwise we're going to die. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. At least I still have a memory submitted the day before. Oh, never mind. We're good. Wait, really? We do? Oh, okay. Well, sweet. Awesome. Small relief that I wouldn't have to go through my own memories and emotions today. That in itself is a saddening thought. Taking a deep breath, I walk towards Deathrell's pillar. My hand shakes a little when I insert my key, but I stand firm. My stomach does a little flip of anticipation as the hall lights up around me. Bing bong! Here's the void. This time, I'm a little more prepared. A continuation of... Of the last memory I viewed, if, if possible. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. What? Perhaps because of my experience, or perhaps because I'm more expectant this time, I don't flounder as much. Still, I would never be prepared enough for that vacuum. Sucking away the last dredge of my feelings as the scenes begin to shift and rearrange themselves before me. Wait! What? Ito, the one who is waiting for you. What? Will certainly chase away your loneliness. No, wait, hold up, I need more non for this. How? Wait, what? Nom, 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 nom. At the very least. That's me! Fuck. What about you? I smile at him. The same smile I wore for him when we first met. His expression does not shift. But I can see his iron heart break. For each night that I keep on waiting, even without sadness, 
The joy I once felt from hearing your voice, I will keep it with me. What? For the first time in a long- Wrong voice. For the first time in a long time, his hands tremble. I do not resist when he wraps his arms around me. Ah. How long has it been since we last embraced like this? No matter what happens, no matter what you do from now on, I love you, sister. Your heart will live once more. Always such sweet words. For I am the only one who he never lies to. <gasps> no! on and be sad and do words at the same time we shall watch the sunset together once more be it this future or the next he chuckles the sound thick in his throat we have said goodbye like this before i was different then and so was he but we were family then and we are still family now Regardless of how I have changed, regardless of how the new pieces within me try to dictate my actions, regardless of the missing one beside me, take care of our son. His arms tighten once before letting go. Until the moon burns red. And the stars all die until darkness blackens the sky. I hope you won't grow too bored, sister. You speak the strangest words. My new door will always be open. That is one thing that won't ever change. I won't be able to help, but they will still insist, you know. I smirk, and that is exactly why only you can visit. And Ruby, eventually. <laughs> yes, though I have wished it would not be so. Well, that would give me something to do. Keeping the angry bunny in check. Excuse- can you read my- Sir, I li- Me? I literally just said I'm an ang- The fuck? Guys, this is too meta. We need to stop. <clears throat> Y'all are like typing this game out as we're playing. <laughs> Do not tease him too much. Without us, you are the eldest now. Ah, uh, this is what being the responsible one feels like, isn't it? Go at ease. I will do all in my power to fill your role. This, I promise. Despite the emptiness, I smile. Our pinkies hook together, a poor imitation of what has passed. I believe. This cold and empty shell I wear. One day, I can cast it away. My tears flow even before Ito's shadow fades away. She shouldn't feel it. She knew, but she couldn't feel it. The feeling of her heart breaking. She couldn't feel it. Because her heart was gone. <sighs> I fall, and seeing through my tears, I expected to meet the cold ground, but sturdy arms are holding me up instead. Death... Deatherall? Nah, just me. This is how you give someone a heart attack. Why would you- why would you- <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> The 
think the flood of emotions and the memory of their parting conversation are too much. I launch myself into Ito's arms, wailing. Distantly, I hear him speak, but I can't make out the words. All I can do is weep and weep. I weep for him. I weep for Detherell. I weep for her missing heart, and I weep for whatever prompted such sorrowful goodbyes. I weep until my tears go dry and my limbs lose their strength. Still, Ito keeps me up, and a hold gentler than any I've felt before. He makes fresh tears spring to my eyes. So, you saw it. I must have burbled something in my spiel. Having no energy left, all I can do is nod. I feel rather than hear Ito sigh. Someone once asked me if it was possible to mourn someone who is still alive. I believe I found the answer. How do you go on, knowing that she once loved you? Knowing that she no longer loves you? Because as much as it pains me, it is far easier to continue loving her. There is not enough non to fill the void. I'm tired of non to fill the void. There's no light. I'm not allowed to make you too sad. You can't do that to him. Ma'am. <laughs> Void needs all the non. <laughs> you passed out in Ito's arms. He brought you here after. Oh no. Oh no. I, I didn't mean to, I swear. I really didn't mean to. Part of me desperately wants Deathrell to know that. That I didn't mean it, and I didn't mean anything by it. But then I remember what led me to the situation in the first place. Deathrell is sitting here, blue eyes glowing in the moonlight, all elegance and danger, gentle still after my less than graceful awakening. I remember the yawning chasm that was supposed to be her emotions in the memories, the heart-wrenching goodbyes she said to her brothers. What happened to you, Detherall? I'm sorry. Hmm. What are you sorry for? I... I... I can't find the words. Would she, would she take it as an insult if I say I'm sorry for what happened? When I don't even have the full context? I quickly scrub my eyes. What am I crying for? Haven't I done that enough? What has that solved so far? But more than that, the idea of whining and crying in front of Deathrell makes me feel even worse. She said she doesn't judge, but I don't want her to think less of me. What if she, if she even has a positive experience of me to begin with? I think we've done this bit. Oh, we're not handling this well. Uh -huh. right, let's save this here instead. The void burps gently. Leave me alone. It does. I am the void. <sighs> I feel like feelings is the way I want to go with this. I feel like feelings is the way I want to go with this. I try to be more composed than when I was last here. It's not exactly successful, as my heart is ramming hard against my ribcage. Especially when I realize the hall isn't empty. Uh, hi, Ito? Hello, Sajima. Hi, Ito. I falter. Suddenly, I feel exposed. Raw. Ito, why did you take me to death row? He pauses, tilting his head. He studies me for a moment. 
Because it felt like you needed her. There are some things only D can do. Some emotions only D can make one feel. You were far more than just unsettled, and you needed her to more move forward. No matter how painful that forward for you could be. My heart pounds against my chest. What he said is true. I was heartbroken and ready to give up. Doubly so when my feathers began to fall out. But whether it was by her words or her magic, Deathrock gave me the strength to stand up. She makes me want to finish what I set out to do. Deathrock has no reason to be gentle with me, yet she continues to be so patient with my fumbles and weakness like no one has ever been for me. Was it not a good thing to do? Uh, well, it was. Seeing Deathrell despite the heavy conversation that followed his eased a knot in my chest. It felt good being able to speak to her again, knowing that she doesn't treat me differently regardless of how I feel about myself. Thank you, Ito. <laughs> you are very welcome. Oh. Oh. Is Cassius dead yet? Oh. So this is all the same. Uh oh. Am I not? Uh. Oh, desire. That's not what. That's not what I want. It isn't what I want. Fuck you, little weird vampire boy. Yes. <laughs> I think so. <sighs> Fuck you, Gildan. <clears throat> oh yeah. No, he's dead. All right. <laughs> If only. Maybe we'll have to do a different playthrough and give Sajima a different voice. <laughs> Go full northern. That all a memory. No. No. Mmm. 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 We ran out of time! We ran out of time! We need to go fast! The Hall of Memory is an obvious choice, but I'm not very confident about running into anyone without me already being there making a fool of myself. Still, I take a deep breath and open the door, moving through the doors as quickly and casually as possible. Though I'm not exactly sure how well I've managed it. <laughs> full, full Northern Angeling, how many redemptions for that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, as long as Deathrell doesn't ask anything. To my disappointment, the hall is empty, but this isn't entirely unexpected. I can't. This song is like so calming, but. Uh, like it. Uh, I'm nervous. Well, I'm here anyway, right? In case I still want to go ahead and acquire the memory of Deathrell. Well, I think I would still want to see more of her memories regardless, so putting one more of mine in wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt, huh? Everything I can think of brings pain to my chest, and it isn't just my grace, either. There are just not as many happy thoughts I can draw up about the heavens. Well, there is that one. Heaving out a sigh, I insert my key. Memory registered. Sajima's available exchange too. 
Placing a hand over my chest, I hold on to that lingering happiness in my younger self's heart. That innocent joy, the simple wonderment over the smallest kind of gesture and attention. If only that could last longer. Shaking my head to get rid of the onslaught of melancholy, I walk towards the door. There is no one here, so that means the people I'm looking for are somewhere else. It's probably for the best because Thingy was gonna fucking kill us and so is Oxon. Ah, okay, we're fine. Diddy boo Lily, oh no, she was mean. Uh oh, oh no, we're going through so fast. We're having sad memories. Will they ever last? I don't know if this is going anywhere. Oh no. No. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Oh. I'm just trying small different things to see if it will do anything, but I think I need to do something more considerable. Uh, go to when you first got into the Hall of Memory. Very first time? Uh, oh fuck. In Is this the first time we met Finnan? No. No! I don't know you! What the fuck? Ah, shit. Alright. Um. <laughs> uh. When's that? 20. 20. I can't read. Um. Yeah, there is a mirror around here. A mirror. Mirror around here. Yeah. Yeah. Is up into the hall. Is there a weird blue bastard here? There is not a weird blue bastard here. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. 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 Do you desire such powers, young angel? No. Where's Finnan? Never thought I'd ask that question. Where's this fucking Finnan? There's that weird bastard! Wait! Come back! Yes! <laughs> Fuck you! Um... I forgot what I did. I think I left. Bye. What I'll do, though, is I'll go here, and then I'll say here. Okay, this is so confusing. All right, uh, bye. Wee. Oh. Lounge. Oh no, come back. Learning. Oh no, come back. No, I will go I will stay. Fuck your privacy. Wee Uh about the memory. You're scary. I'm already We didn't pick this one actually last time. I think about the day before, how Desrael could put powerful beings like Oxon and Cassius in their place with a simple gesture. I can't stop the shudder that runs down my spine. I've always been taught to respect author authority. My words should always be measured and I should never speak out of line. There are consequences to everything. 
careless words sometimes can bring about the most devastating punishments. Light go fast. It takes me a moment to understand what Death Row is referring to. What? No, he was a traitor and he... It was a rebellion. It has nothing to do with... That is the cause, not the same. Careless words. <sighs> it was more than just that. It was everything that an angel shouldn't do. Everything that is awful and out of line and evil. Saejima, you are no longer in heaven. I know. Most of the rules do would not follow you here. <sighs> Did it go down there? I don't know. I don't know at this point. Like, I understand that. But I shouldn't forgo all rules just because I'm elsewhere. What would that say about my character then? My in integrity? I don't follow the rules because I'm afraid of the punishment. I follow the rules because I'm afraid of the punishment. I don't know why I suddenly falter, sputtering to a stop in my passionate spiel. It's the right thing to do never rolls off my tongue, standing before death roll's steady gaze. Why do I doubt? That is always a choice. How you choose to walk that upon is the path is head is entirely up to you. Rules can serve as a guideline, but sometimes they might lead you astray. And yet, there is no certain way for you to know which direction to take here in the yonder. It is not a comforting thought. If I can't follow the life compass instilled in me at the greatest hour of need, then am I truly lost? Yes. I dreamed a dream of days gone by. Ow! I feel my days within- what the fuck are you telling me? You're not ready to be here yet. Fucking says you, you little bastard. The throne room. They about to kill someone. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait. Okay. Oh. I liked Finnan. They broke my trust. That's on them. Oh no. Bye. Again. See, I don't remember how to get back. I don't remember how to get back. And it is a man. Sometimes, 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 <sighs> I I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember where that was. Day fifteen. Are we gonna? Yep. <laughs> Go where to have the choice to unlock the pillar. Okay, okay. Thank you. This is the benefit of having you guys here. Because I'm so very... Poopy duped. Here. <laughs> no, it's fine! It's fine! <laughs> you are absolutely fine to giggle at this. <laughs> it's the, the pain. Alright. And leave? Unlock it. Alright. That swooping. Oh! Je suis poopoo head. Messy. Thank you. Oh no. This was the first. 
decision. I'm gonna save over that. Fuck Venom. Um. I think I accidentally chose that other last time. A fair established trade. Seems silly to put more restrictions upon it. No. Oh, the mem memories. Um. What are all my affections at? Well, Axan and Cassius cannot keep their hands off of me. Um. <laughs> oh, just. Oh my God, the lust! It overfloweth. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, we have Death Row. Um, eight. Eight. A solid eight. Would the others have a problem with me having permission to such a place? If they do, they would not have put their memories in a place accessible by many other visitors. Well, that's reassuring and all, especially since they all seem amicable to each other. On the surface? I, I mean, sure, but still. You think it is you they would have a problem with? Yes. If you are afraid of them harming you, then they cannot do so without bringing consequences to themselves. The Onda does not tolerate any maiming or killing among its visitors. Keep all your hands, arms, and legs in the vehicle at all times. I hope it won't come to that. <laughs> Are you interested in their memories? That gives me pause. I think about Axon's unveiled hostility, Cassius's antagonistic attitudes, and Finnan's strange passive-aggressive speech patterns. Oh, we can dive into their shit? Oh, lord. It's not been all bad, of course. Take Ido, for example. He hasn't told a single lie. <laughs> But the one thing they all have in common is that I haven't known them long enough. I'm not sure I could care enough to delve into their personal business like that. No, I don't think so. Then I do not see a problem. I bob my head in agreement. Though, I don't even know what kind of memory that's run a sturgeon now. Oh, poo nuggets. Um... I know I did. I I know like we're trying to change our decisions, but that means leaving her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wanted to. No, she doesn't care. I, <laughs> I need to remember that she doesn't have a heart. Um, I can't deny it. I am far too curious to not go to the Hall of Memory. So, with a bow to Death Row, I turn to the door, anticipation beating wild in my chest. Just as my first time here, the Hall of Memory takes the breath out of my lungs. <gasps> it isn't just the beauty of the luminous crystal columns or the gorgeous arches. It's the solemnity of the place, a heavy reminder of just how important it is. Standing alone here, listening to the soft, strange hums in the air, I shudder involuntarily. It's almost like I'm among ghosts. <gasps> my people! It's not that far from the truth. Echoes of the past. That's what these are. So I have to put in a memory of mine first, huh? Wait, Finnan. Uh, wait, no. Um, someone needs to be here. Someone needs to be here, or we're gonna die. The idea makes me uncomfortable. 
How are the others okay with this? I don't want to try my luck without following the correct procedure first. It seems far too important to try and cheat the system. And even though I'm by myself, I feel like I'm being watched. Ruby, I've never wanted to see a smarmy fucking face since... Come on, I need... need, 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 need. Swallowing dryly, I approached the pillar bearing my name, clutching at the key in my pocket. How does one even do this? Oh no, nobody's coming. I take out the key, flipping it in my palm. Last time I had to turn the lock to activate my pillar. Maybe I have to do the same thing to input my memory? This feels more like a computer than a magical device. Taking a deep breath, I insert the key and turn it. <laughs> what I'm hearing is Key just wants a Ruby focus game. No! No! <laughs> I mean I can imagine I can imagine like a, a character action game or or like um a shooter that's just Ruby blowing up angels. I would be pretty down with that shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Key loves Ruby, no! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh my god, no. I mean, no, I'm not. No. A flash of light startles me. A sudden flood of memories in my head makes me stumble. Oh, I'm dead. Ah. Uh... Oh. Oh no, we're okay. So, so, so what? So far? Oh. Stop wasting time, Sajima. But I- Do not talk back to your elder. Go reflect upon your actions. <gasps> you have exceeded your entries for this month. Well, that can be right, I watch my limits carefully. Your caretaker has informed us that you are not keeping up with your given tasks. As punishment, your monthly entry limits have been reduced. But that- But that- Skip up- Ah! I should have kept my mouth shut. A thin sheen of dust has floated up from the jar. I don't even know what happens next, only able to grab the tablet and hold it in front of my face before a flash consumes the entire room. The force of the blast knocks me backwards, my wings slam painfully into the shelves. Ah! Sorry. Ah! The higher-up bottles rain down on me. I raise the clipboard over my head, screaming as horrible pain shoots through me. Yeah, we've done all of this. I think this is death. Oh, death. <sighs> done for the day. Yeah, she gets abandoned by her caretaker. Hey. <sighs> oh, death. Oh, death. Hey! Uh, duh, duh, duh. Oh, I'm gonna be optimistic. Sajima, snap out of it! No, I, I, I don't even know whose voice that was. The voice. The voice sounds familiar. Desperately, I reach out. Anything. Anyone. Please. Oh! Yay! Yay! It's so Kill him. Kill them, sorry. I wake to firm hands on my shoulders. It takes me a moment to realize the hands belong to Ito. Sajima, are you okay? You fucking die, bro. I... I... A wail rips itself out from my throat. Dimly, I feel Ito's arms around me and I automatically cling to him. I want Ito hugs so bad. Y'all don't even know. Disoriented, all I can feel is the sound of my heart breaking. I don't know how long we sat there on the cold floor. As my throat goes dry and my eyes swell so much that no more tears can come out, I can feel Ito's warm hand on my back rubbing soothing circles as I stifle my sobs. His music only getting more comforting. Feeling better? 
Thank you. No need. He pulls me up to my feet, handing me the things I must have dropped in my trance. Sorry, Ha. I didn't mean to be a bother. Not at all. Dee felt you had been in here for too long and sent me to check on you. She... she did? Indeed. You seemed to be in a bit of shock there when I walked in, so I'm glad she sent me. What happened? Uh, I was trying to, um, input my memory into the pillar, but I got a bit overwhelmed, I think. Ah, uh, yes, it can be easy to be lost in the torrent of your past. Yes. I, I don't know how quite to do it, so it was a bit of a stumble. Ito's relaxed. <laughs> Ito's relaxed, somewhat playful posture immediately stiffens. I startle an apology on the tip of my tongue. Finn... Finn didn't tell you? Ah, uh, well, there was a lot of information to take in yesterday. And I asked a lot of questions. I didn't think to ask. I didn't want to keep them around too long either. My voice trails off and I find myself folding quickly under Ito's stern look. Uh, no, they didn't. Finnan only gave me the key to activate the pillar and told me, uh, if I want to access the hall's functions, I can use the key on other pillars. Somehow the air seems to grow colder. Finnan should have explained it to you. That insolent brat. <laughs> I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. Saijima, that speaks more for your character than that child. Finnan was given a very significant, some even say sacred, task. They had done this enough times to know easing someone into their first time using the Hall of Memory is of utmost importance. Neglecting to instruct you is a deliberate action on Finnan's part. But... but why? Have I offended them somehow? It's because I asked too many questions, isn't it? Or was it because I've always been so awkward and lacking tact around them? Finnan's feelings matter very little when it comes to the Hall of Memory. Besides, it has never taken much for Finnan to hate someone. Here, I'll escort you back to your room. I'll report this incident to Dee. Ah, <sighs> all right. Taking a deep breath, I accept his offering hand. Normally, I would have felt some comfort from his kind gestures, or even being flustered over having someone so close. But the remnants of feelings from what happened left me too drained and cold to react to anything. I don't think I'll have much energy to deal with anything else today. Oh, like, pa like, I don't despise Finnan? But was I hoping Ito would also pluck that fucker out from the fabric of reality and fucking yeet him into the abyss? Absolutely. fucking lootly <laughs> Abso fucking lootly <laughs> Just because of how fucking... It's not quite, got quite the same rip to it as, as Ruby had, but R Ruby's got a little bit of a punch. Yeah, a little bit more tact than Ruby has, yeah. Oh my god. Alright. Perhaps it is because of all the memories I was reminded of yesterday. Memories that reminded me that my time back in heaven was not all that great. Memories that reminded me that I am incompetent. That I am unneeded. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh. Oh, the. Uh. Is this our room? Oh, I should save. <laughs> should save the game. You do as his sister says, or you dead. Damn right. And I do so love my brother. Well. Did so once love my brother Ito. And perhaps, had I the heart. It's really weird going into 
the more I get to know Deathrell, the weirder it feels getting into character as her. Because you just literally, like, f just flick the switch of emotion and just kind of embrace everything that is currently happening. And there is a slight melancholy to it all. And a slight amusement. And so little of it is actually emotional. And then you flick the switch back and I was like, Wee! <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> it's, it's very intriguing. <laughs> After what happened the day before, I don't know what to expect today. And again, I've never been prepared to deal with whatever the owner's been throwing at me anyway. Hello, Deathral. Hello, little angel. <laughs> Why are you so creepy? I open my mouth, but hesitate. Ito said he would bring up the matter regarding Finn and Deathrow, but I don't want to just jump straight into it. So where's Finn gone? Finn is a guest, a real guest, and someone who is far more important than I am. I don't want to be seen as a problematic or draw more attention to myself than necessary. I certainly don't want to look like a disrespected person of a of authority. <laughs> oh, can we bring it out from like the perspective of, hey, yo, uh, 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 um, is Finn okay? Cause like he did that thing yesterday and it was super crazy cause like I thought they were super cool. Oh, uh, but like, what was that about? Like, brr, you know, it's not tattling. It's just being like, what? Why would they do that to me? Why would they do that to little old me? Did I do something to offend them, Death Row? Yeah. Something Ito said suddenly jumps out at me. It does. It does. If I just hang my head and accept that kind of treatment, that would speak more about my character than Finnan's. Oh. Yes, and that is the intention we had. <laughs> Usually we've been very, like, on a, on a level with that kind of thing. <laughs> Somehow. Curling my hands into fists, I take a shaking step forward. Um, thank you for sending Ito to me yesterday. Ah, uh, yeah. Finn. Ah, uh, uh, Yes? I'm sure it might- Those are two words that contradict each other in less than a sentence. Oh. I- You made up your mind to raise the issue. Don't lose your nerves now. I- It's just difficult- Everyone here is powerful and dangerous and scary. She liked that. <gasps> she did. She did like that. And I am just... Just me. I try to stop, but the tears keep on coming and they don't stop coming and they keep on coming and they don't stop coming. I furiously try to wipe them away, but they won't stop. A voice in my head sounding suspiciously like my caretaker scolds me to quit it, to correct my posture and stop disrespecting Deathrell with my inability to control my emotions. But the tears won't stop coming. They don't stop coming. I, I'm sorry. I, I... Oh! 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 I almost don't feel it. The tendril of darkness on my cheek. Oh, the lighting! Mm, so beautiful! Gentle yet cold like an autumn breeze, it... Deathrell carefully catches my tears, gathering up the shining droplets in one sweep. Sometimes people commit horrible acts to others without provocation. Regardless of your station or theirs, you should not have to apologize for the wrongs done to you. 
Unable to form words, I clutch the clipboard close to my chest. Staring wide-eyed at Death Rall's soft smile, everything seems to just melt away. I can't even remember why I was crying just moments ago, how silly it was being so worked up. There is an endless depth in her two blue eyes, so calm and shimmering with untold stories. A reminder that perhaps she might have seen it all, and that she would not judge me no matter how little I think of myself. Death Rail's voice breaks the silence between us, startling me into writing my posture out of habit. In order to submit a memory to the hall, you must focus upon the chosen particular experience while having the pillar unlocked. Once you deem it is enough, wheel yourself back to the hall of memory and lock your pillar. To exchange for someone else's memory, insert your key into the pillar bearing that one's name. The pillar shall determine a worthy trade. Thank you. She nods, although her eyes are no longer upon me. Instead, Deathrill tilts her head back and watches the perpetual midnight sky with half-lidded eyes. You may go. You should go. Ah, uh, uh, right. Thank you. Trying my hardest not to trip over my own feet, I quickly turn and scamper back into my room. Oh my god, if she did, though. If she did, though. Comedy gold. <laughs> but also tragic. My devices clatter to the floor as soon as the door is closed, but I don't even notice that. A heart rabbit fast, I bring my hands up to my cheeks, feeling a pleasant burning under my fingertips. What, what was that about? Oh. <laughs> Death row? No, that's gonna, that's gonna, it's fine, it's fine. I'm just, I'm used to different numbers. Hey guys, yes, how you doing? So we don't know what's happened to Finnan. We don't know what's happened to Finnan. Hello? Alright. <laughs> or perhaps Dazrael has already, get out of here, fly. I know it's immersive, but you can watch on the big screen. Get away. Oh. Or perhaps Death Row has already punished Finn and, uh, and I just missed it. Nah. <laughs> Maybe? Nah, she wouldn't do that. But I've been here long enough to not remain too hopeful. A shudder crawls through my body. Oh! 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 New option! New option! King! Wait, I'm here for this music. I'm here for this. Do it again. Do it again. Obs. I forgot how long this alert is. King. Wait. Play the. Play the. It's just play. It's just playing the alert over. All right. Do it. Play it. We need this. Twenty four months. Sajma looking. Oh no, it's too many. It's too many. It's too many. Hush. Random fine lads. That is enough out of no. King! <laughs> Thank you so much for two years! So many years! Thank you so much for the sub wubble 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 wubble. Sajima so looking down at all of these random fine lads. Oh, King! We we have had that recently reciprocated by B. Wait, where's the gallery? No, I need to show King. I need to show King how far we've come. We've died many times. Also, 
We've died many times also. But look what we just got, King! We got Sanjima being caressed! Caressed with the darkness! How are you doing, friend? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much again for the zombie with me. We also got stabbed. I think you missed that. But it's fine. We also got exploded. Why well, didn't get exploded? There's so many things have happened. I do hope you're doing well, friend. And thank you so much again for the zombie with me. Oh, you missed. Fuck, King. This is a really good game. <laughs> that i am also i also happen to be in but fuck like just just I'll, I'll just fucking like buy someone a copy we'll just do a giveaway like i've got a this is so good i've got enough i've seen enough end time to know where this is going is this is this a wholesome a wholesome experience of family eating small celestials out of the door and their fuck buddies with them um going to heaven a new mortal with a with a small vampire lad uh who destroys all the angels and will protect you from all of the angels until your mortal existence ends um by exploding all of the angels from your past home like it's so sweet <laughs> well you're whole sometimes this is true I ate my heart this one time. What is it like to be wholesome when I am only some some? <laughs> oh, yay! Right, this is a new option. Oh, but I'm curious though. We'll have to remember this. I'll, we'll have to remember this playthrough. She'll be like, I haven't done anything, but maybe she'll. Oh, wrong page. <laughs> A strange, conflicting feeling curls in my chest. I look upon De Death Row, but the darkness that always surrounds her like the perpetual midnight of yonder world. Interview with the Void. I no longer feel fear towards Death Row. Yay! God, it's only taken like five roots. <laughs> Just trying to romance Death around. We're not even looking at the other characters. We are, respectfully. But we're not. Mm. Is there an Ito route? I, I'm okay if there is not. But I'm just. He's very nice. And I want him to be happy. I no long. No, that's fair. That. I understand. I understand. I understand. Look. I I have the I have the worst selection. I know I do. <laughs> I know. The boy is taken. Oh, with the sun. I forgot he fucked the sun. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I just I'll I'll settle for a hug. I'll settle for a hug. <laughs> I don't know how I can hug him. Or how we can just hug it out and just be like, just knowing nods at each other. The sun, the sun, S-U-N. We play as the sun itself, yes. <laughs> we're super hot though. Yeah, we're so hot. So good and shit. You know, he, 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 I think fucked the actual planet sun, star sun, yeah. Oh no, you're good. It's not <laughs> again, not that kind of game, thankfully. His husbando is very hot in many ways. Hell yes. I'll I'll settle for a hug though. I'm not I'm cool with it. And besides, this route with Death Row might be the one. I no longer feel fear towards Death Row. Is it a good thing? I do not know. All that I'm certain about is an immense sense of gratitude. Can you imagine, like, they just bring Finnan into this room and and she just picks them up and just throws them out of one of the top windows. Just literal fucking yeet. I'm very curious as to how that process works. I don't know if we're gonna see it though, so I don't wanna... I don't wanna know if we're gonna see it, but... 
maybe the imagination of what actually happens is worse. I don't know. I... Thank you. Mm. <gasps> Five full endings? Oh, shit. That is good to know. Well, we've gotten two. And that's the bad one. Do the bad ones count? In which case, we've, we're closer to the five. <laughs> Shit. There's a lot in Death Rails Root. There's, there's so many roots. That's what I love, though. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Mm. Is there a root where uh, Udon finds us after Finnan's betrayal? <laughs> A lot of bad ends. Ah, okay, okay. We've got a couple of them, haven't we? Or no, because that's before the route started that we got the... We got the Cassia stab. Oh no! Oh no! Wait! We got two bad endings. Wait, but we've got two good ending! Well, one good ending and one ending ending. Ooh! Oh, I'm I'm look. I'm happy to just keep playing this fucking game. I'm just, I don't need no fucking reason. I'm just wondering what's going to fucking happen. I got I only got a little bit more like emotional Peshwarian on left if needed. So, hmm. I understand you've taken action according to the Anders rules. Okay, got gotcha. you. Thank you. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> How many death endings are there approximately just in total for the entire game? Just out of curiosity. But I thank you nonetheless. Because nobody has ever taken my side before. I only wish it didn't have to come at someone else's expense. You are upset over this. I blink up at death rail and sigh. I... I am... Even though I... I understand that Finnan broke the Anders rules, I can't help but think it's my fault. Okay. Oh, so we, we kind of assumed... Oh. 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 Oh, no. What... What would happen if Ito didn't find me that day? You would have been consumed by your memories. Your emotions would have overwhelmed you. And your mind shattered as a result. Yeah, we got we got the Yeah, we found two actual endings. We found like th three bad three bad endings. Cause we got the we got the Cassius stab, but that was before the roots properly started. We got Oh we got the very first one as well. <laughs> So that's two before the root start. And then when the root start, we got... Yeah, heaven... Ooh, heaven get blown up, pew pew. And then we got the one after that, which was when our memories got sh or Not memories, memories got shattered at the end of that. So we were like, okay, I guess we're just gonna die here eventually. Bark bark, chicken suit. Um, ooh, all the memories. Kachik, flick, fum. Bam! Bad ending. Um, have we got a bad ending today? We have. Haven't we? I've forgotten. Oh no. No, we haven't got a bad ending today. Haven't we? Hmm. So many memories. Yeah, we have. What was the one we got? <laughs> what was the one we got? You forgot how many it was. That's fair enough. What was the bad ending we got today? Who killed us? Wasn't it? Oh my god, it was just so many. It was so many. I thought we were we were very close to getting a few when we thought Cassius was gonna murder us. Well, because Cassius was gonna murder us, but uh, they didn't manage. 
Choo choo choo! No. I'm unable to form words. A choke noise escapes me. I'll write them all down after the stream. And... And Finnan knew this? I also knew this. We've done this bit. She didn't have to send Ido for me. Yet she did. What about the blue? Oh! Oh no! Oh no! My table is broken! We did discipline last time. Not that I think these will be potent enough, though. We need- we need them potent memories. Oh, this chair is uncomfortable. I latch onto the thought of home, of my day spent learning about the uh, prospects of heaven. Precepts of heaven. Of simpler times when I could read and all I needed to worry about were my grades. I think about my time studying in the secondary academy when I was a fledgling, when classes were more than just about written principles. Perhaps I'm being too vague. I blink at the small jar in my hand. The substance inside is viscous and blackened. Nothing like this shimmering blue concoction our, instruction, our instructor has conjured up. This is impossible. I've checked and double-checked the ingredient list. I've made sure to set the timer correct down to a millisecond and I obsessively checked the brewing temperature. What went wrong? <gasps> wait, 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 no. <laughs> Did, cause we, we were accidentally friends with Lilith, right? And Lilith escapey waped. But they, the angels probably still were really mad at us for that, because they're dicks sometimes. So what if they... did this to us? Like, my... there has been a suspicion this whole time that the angels did this to us and sent us to the yonder. Or something? Or at least tried to yeet us out of heaven? But we're getting only more and more evidence to that fact. We're not stupid. We're naive. Hmm. Either way, angels be dicks sometimes. <sighs> this is unacceptable, Sajima. Ah, my deepest apology, sir. Everything looked perfect during the process. I replicated the recipe down to the second. The potion should have... You are missing the point, Saijima. Around us, my classmates have all turned to watch the conversation respectfully quiet, but not at all without curiosity. I shrink in my seat, wings folding tightly against my shoulders. Embarrassment burns hot in my chest. A apologies, sir. Following written examples and listening to lectures are well within the minimum requirements. However, as you grow and progress, you will find that inadequate. Instructions can only go so far if you do not have the intuition to improve and adapt. As stated at the beginning of this seminar, this is your most important exercise, which you have clearly forgotten. This is the first time I failed an assignment in class. The first time I'm called out like this in front of my classmates. I bite down on my lips as my vision blurs. I've always been a bit of a crybaby, but I can't cry now. Not in front of the whole class. Your chemical procedures are different from the basics of mixing and grading components, which you learned from the first academy. In order to control your magic flow, you must keep a clear mind and steady composure. Wow, we're fucked. Any unnecessary thought or action can compromise the final result, result, as you can see here. Can anyone tell me why the concoction has this color and consistency? Several hands shoot up. One gracefully stands as the instructor nods his assent. So, 
The color of this concoction is a result of an excessive amount of concentration from the brewer. The consistency is both a byproduct of this and a lack of control over one's thoughts. While focused, Sajima must have been intruding the flashes in her mind during the procedure. I did not! I- Silence, Sajima. Turning to my classmate, he nods his approval. A fine assessment. Sajima, not everything you can learn is in text. You would do well to remember this. Y yes sir. I keep my head lowered even after the instructor has walked away. I can feel eyes on me burning holes into me. My wings fold around me tightly, but they provide little protection, small as they are. I want to run, but the lecture continues. I want to hide, but there is nowhere to go. Such a small, small event. A century ago, and yet I can feel it gnawing away at my heart. Have my memories always been so painful? I love memory. I want to go back to the Yonder. Please. Remember me, Minister. Hmm. 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 We don't have an explicit enough reason to go other places. Unless we see Ruby or potentially Ito. But also fuck Ruby. <laughs> uh... We are nervous chicken child. Let's go to the hole. But I just looked up. <laughs> Wait, is Cassius still alive? Cassius hasn't. Cassius hasn't died. Has he? I don't want that. No, thank you. I don't think he's died yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, Cassius. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fuck you, children. Piss off, unless it made death or all sadder. Uh, a little bit, but maybe not in the worst way. Ah, there he goes. Now he's dead. I didn't do anything I think depending no maybe I won't do anything I don't know <laughs> okay I don't know right, let's, let's just go back for some context for the scene you you have helped me so much ever since my arrival if there is anything I can do, please, please let me know. Hmm. 
And what is it exactly that you can do? Taken aback by her question, I blink flabbergasted. Pardon? What is it that you can do? What exactly do you think you can do for me? Insecurity raises its ugly head. What, I, what exactly do I think I can do for her? Why do I think I can do anything for someone like Detherall? And why am I so desperate for Detherall to know what, that I can be of use to her? <laughs> One's in the void yet again. Right? Right? I need, I need that show. Because she's just, she wouldn't react to any of the hot, the hot spices. <laughs> be great. Oh no! Wings conveniently provided by your very own angel. Nay, no! I know it's here. You wrote it, but no! No! <laughs> Don't do it! Don't do it! <sighs> that's... That's why I said to... To tell me if there's something you might want. I trail off, uncertain under her piercing gaze. <laughs> Detherall watches me for a moment, then lets out an amused chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a terrible merchant. I would be a what now? I said your sales pitch is terrible. But I I'm not trying to sell you anything. Are you not? Why would I take on your offer when you do not know what you are capable of? I... I don't know what to say to her. I don't know what to do except helplessly stare up at Deathrow waiting for her to say something. Give me an instruction. Tell me what to do. It's not a transaction, you know. I did not do anything for you, and I do not expect any repayment. Oh no, not again. Not again. Hmm. I'm gonna keep doubling down. Balls to the wall, holes to the memory. Memory to the. Axan. Lily! Oh no, she's actually evil. Hey, look, she didn't die though. That we know of. Oh, Jesus. Oh, is it going to be the same? Is it going to be the same? It's going to be the same. So we just went... Fully haul that time. Man! Hmm. Double down? Okay. Okay. That is all. Oh, shit, I didn't save as early as I thought. Yes! <laughs> oh, fuck you! I don't hate you, but get out! Ah! Cassius, no! Oh, no. I don't know what I can do for you. You've already got the perfect top hat. <sighs> oh. mm. <sighs> mm. 
dark sun. Possibly. Likely. Cassius, if he's still alive, which he probably isn't. Most likely Rubius. Most likely Ito. <laughs> um... <sighs> what is my tummy saying? Ito, because <laughs> fuck Ruby. <laughs> Ruby would make more sense. We did also pick Ruby that one other route, but he threatened us. So, Ito. Ito doesn't... You know, I was about to say Ito doesn't lie. Ito doesn't lie! Ito doesn't lie! He does not. Nope. The lounge can be a pretty neutral place for people to lounge around, yeah? I would have the best chance of running into someone there. Not sure those someones would be the ones I need to see, though. Ugh. <laughs> Tell me, God, are you punishing me? Is this the price I'm paying for my first mistakes? Fuck up, Gilbert! I keep forgetting that one cannot get any semblance of privacy in this place. If you want privacy, maybe you should just stay in your room. And subject myself to confinement? No thanks. Then stop complaining. Keldrin slams the book in his hand back onto the shelf. I don't quite startle, but it's a near thing. Still, I glare at him defiantly as Keldrin slowly turns to face me. You are lucky that there is a dumb rule about not putting mouthy little angels in their place, Frolin. Otherwise, you would have been strung up like a butchered goose several times by now. Mm, Keldron, is that a threat? Mm, Keldron. Fucking try it. Fucking try it, Keldron. This is an open invitation, bitch. Give it a go. Give it a go. See what happens. Not sure if the rule is quite as specific as you have described. Last time I checked, it is to prevent pompous buffoons from acting like raging barbarians. <laughs> is that so? I guess I must take your word for it, Frowlin, considering you have had quite a few close calls regarding that rule. Has news about what happened yesterday already traveled? How does Keldrin know about this so quickly? Before I could even think of something to retort at him, Keldrin huffs. Well, are you just going to stand there like a buffoon you so audaciously associated me with, or are you going to get out of my sight? Oh! Oh! My heart! Ow! He took my word, but then used it against me! Oh no! Ow! So creative! Such a man! That breeds! You can't get more creative insults from the back of a kettle instruction manual. You filament. <laughs> you. You water boiler. Still better than using my words, bitch. I'm just saying. <laughs> Keldron and Finn put us all into fight mode. <laughs> pew, pew. He's about to take that glove off, and I'm gonna take it off of him and slap him with it. Fucking jewel. The nerve of this man. Keldron seems to be more agitated than the last time I saw him. But at the moment, I don't give a flying shit about that. Oh! Oh! Not wanting to trade more words with him, I pointedly go to sit on an armchair. The brief look of fury on Keldron's face is absolutely worth it. What I didn't expect to hear is him muttering angrily under his breath in perfect German. Yeah, to an angel who knows all fucking languages, except unless all my mortal, immortal powers are seeping out of my brain. But like, otherwise, you're fucking done, mate. Wait, you, you know German? Are you, are you from my world? 
But if you are, then why haven't I heard about you before? Oh, it was an accidental, but an insult nonetheless. Exasperated, he raises three fingers, curling one down for every answer he gives me. Of course I do. What do you think Fraulin and Null mean? Obviously not. As gaudy as the angels of my world are, at least they have enough sense to not wear a potato sack out in public. Even if you were from my world, I doubt you have enough clearance to have heard about me, Fraulin. Well, sorry for asking then. You spoke German, so I thought... I am absolutely not about to explain the different universes to you. Uh, eh? Cauldron looks like he's at the absolute end of his patience. Is this a game to you, Saijima? Do you think nothing would come to you if you just remain ignorant forever? I... I don't. Being ignorant is how I got here into this mess to begin with. That's why I'm asking, but if you are too much of a prick to answer anything, then just say so. No. You must be making a mistake. I did answer your questions, Frowen. You... Well, it is good that you admitted your ignorance regardless. Dealing with a clueless idiot who thinks she is smart would be utterly exhausting. Do you have nothing but insults to throw around? Keldron opens his mouth, but I frantically wave my hand to stop him from twisting my words around. Yes, yes, I know you've already said more than just insults. Standing up, I make sure to glare at him extra hard before turning to leave. Keldron looks like he's about to say something, but he pauses long enough for me to get to the door. Don't believe everything in front of you, Frowlin. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, either. Ugh! Fully missed opportunity for the don't let the door hit you where the good lord split you. I don't think it can get, it can get better than saying it to a fucking angel. <laughs> oh, hi, Axan. <laughs> Lily, why did you die? I think about what Keldron said and fail to fight back a cold tremble. Is it really alright if I keep being so ignorant? Am I really changing for the better? Or am I just taking bits and pieces of what I think is progress as a win? While ignoring the very core of my problems. Probably. Let's go back in anyway. We. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This fly wants to fight Keldron as well. Stop. Move. Get out of here. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Alright, out of curiosity. Out of curiosity. Uh. <laughs> I've run into Rubeus before in the research hall. Maybe I'd run into him again today. The chances are a bit slim, but I don't have any way of knowing with the whereabouts of either him or Ito. At the very least, going to the research hall might give me a chance to get my thoughts in order, whether I'm seeing anyone or not. Oh wait, this is the same one as before? Oh, that's not fucking helpful. We. Alright, uh, so, oh, so many options. What's that? Yes, please do, please do. I don't want to know all of the details, but if anything would help speed things up a little bit, that would be great. Maybe one of them would be lounging in the dining room. Probably go see Axon and see her get real mad. Pretty unlikely, and I'm probably going to have more luck finding Axon there than either Rubius or Ito. But all the excitement, if one can call it that from yesterday, is me pretty famished. My friendship point is too high? Oh. oh, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. At this point, like at this point, or getting into her route. Ooh. Interesting. Too ooh, ooh and not enough. Mm, yeah. 
I think I was avoiding it since, like, knowing that she killed us before we could even get to the roots. At this point, yeah. Okay. Thank you, that does help. I'm going to piss her off at some point. <laughs> Thank you, King! Bread, peanut butter, and the array of jellies. Oh, here for jellies. Pretty unlikely. I'm probably gonna have m more luck finding oxen there than either Rubius or Ito. But all the excitement, if one can call it that, from yesterday has me pretty famished. I don't really want to go back there after yesterday, either. Seeing the mess after what happened? I don't know if I can stomach it. Oh. <laughs> Let's get another bad ending, shall we? <laughs> we have the weapon! We still have the weapon! And you! Oh no, but if we kill her, then Dethril has to kill us. No. Unless we can get Arxan to try and kill us. That would be very shady, though. Hmm. Hmm. Might as well grab a bite while I'm at it. Chances are Ito might be enjoying a cup of tea there. <gasps> that would be nice! Yay! Yay! Ito! Ito! Don't kill me! Why, hello there. Fancy seeing you here, Saejima. First of all, the room is entirely spotless with no trace of the struggle yesterday. To which I'm confused about, but immensely thankful of. Secondly... Yes! It's Ito. A fancy seeing you too! Looking chipper today? Care for a cup of tea? If you're making it, sure! Ito pours me a cup and pushes forward a dish full of colorful little cubes. A sweet treat for a sweet little angel. He never lies! Thank you. It's all the more reassuring. <laughs> what? These are so nice! A sweet melt in my mouth with some fruity, chewy bits. Perfect to go with this fragrant tea, Ito brood. Right? Did you make these? Of course not. I was told they are nougats. The colorful part are gumdrops. Delicious, aren't they? <laughs> they are. Have as many as you want. I have quite a lot of them. Oh, you have a stash? Hmm, you can say that. Let's just say the person who made the mess produced these cute little cubes out of stress. Stress cooking? Indeed. That one can be quite impulsive, despite vehemently denying that about them. Nobody wants to hear about their worst traits, huh? I suppose not. Nobody wants to make small talk either, but it will always be seen as a necessity, isn't it? I... I... I'm sorry. No need. He refills his cup of tea as I anxiously fiddle with my quill. I definitely didn't expect to be called out like this, and that pulled the rug from under me. I heard about what happened yesterday. You were looking for me, weren't you? Uh, how did you know? Upon entering the room, you seem to be in somewhat of a rush. You were looking relieved and eager to see me, perhaps a little excited, too. Now... Regardless of our prior interactions, we are not exactly close. Given the circumstances of yesterday, you must be off-kilter and uncertain of many things. You want something from me, do you not? After this and yesterday, I will probably come to associate this room with the feeling of being trapped. Yes, I have some questions, if you don't mind. Ito winks at me. I wouldn't have invited you for tea if I minded. You ought to be more relaxed sometimes, Sajima. My leaf has me releasing a breath I didn't even know I'd been holding. Honestly, it can be quite difficult to relax around here. That I can agree with. What would you like to ask? I had meant to be more confident than this, but Ito really has taken the wind out of my sail. The words I've prepared to say come out in uncertain squeaks, prompting an amused smirk from Ito. I want to, I, I want to know more ab about about Deathrel. I I want 
to help her. Do you know? I, I yes. And why is that? I, she. I can't just say it. I can't just say that to Edo. If anything, I, I want Deathrall to hear it first from me. Hanging my head, I try my best to work through my bluster. Deathrell, I just, I saw that Axon and Cassius were helping her with something before. I'm just wondering if I can be of help. I, I, I guess if I know more about Deathrell, then may, maybe I can do something to help her. I see. Sajma, what you know and what you can do are very different. Of course. I clutch at my tattered devices. My heart thuds heavily as I stare down at my lap. I was getting too hopeful. Using Oxen and Cassius as a comparison was stupid. As terrible as Cassius was, he was equally powerful. I am definitely not the latter. So there is nothing I, I can do then? You give up too easily. What? But if it's something I can't do, then what's the point in pushing for it? That is true. You're agreeing? Shouldn't I? <sighs> You're messing with me, aren't you? I can assure you that I am not. I was merely making an observation. I then agreed with your statement. How is that messing around? You... Cassius died, so now Ito is taking his place and antagonizing me? Is that it? His light chuckle breaks the tension quickly, though. Saejima, you take everything at face level, don't you? I... I suppose I do. It's how I was taught. There is only one way to interpret something in the heavens. No matter which layer you're on, it would be the same. I can see how Leander would be pretty confusing for you. My sister doesn't probably make it any easier. She... I guess so. She can be pretty peculiar. But I don't think I could have made it this far without her. She definitely prevented me from completely losing myself a couple of times. When I first got here, I thought I was done for. Death Row was just so scary. But she has always been kind. She doesn't have to be, but she always has been kind. And she saved me, protected me. No one... No one has ever done that for me before. So that's why I want to see if I can help her in any way. I want to... I want to do something for her. If there is anything within my capability, I, I will do it. And, and it's not something out of debt or just general gratefulness either. I just... I just want to do something for her. Sejma, you fancy my sister. I... I... I've said this to you before and received a different reaction. Acting the way you are now, you have fully accepted it. I... Unable to say anything, unable to look at him, I hang my head and nod, feeling like my entire body is melting. It is easy to love her, isn't it? Too bad she lost her heart. I think if she still had it, then she could love you too. R really? S sorry. I... How did she lose her heart? And is there... is there a way to help her retrieve it? Nita watches me for a long moment. Flustered by my own eagerness, I look away. It quickly becomes uncomfortable. His gaze holds almost the same intensity as Deathrall's, gazing deep into my soul. I am honor-bound to not share the explicit details, but you may find some clues within her most precious memory. <gasps> right. Thank you, Ito. You are very welcome.
<laughs> the achievement release is gonna make people go insane trying to get all the endings. Oh my god. Who? I can imagine. Heck. All right, let me check something a real quick and see if we can have one more lull go. This is a bop. It's not going to such a bop. <laughs> I'm going to real quick go and get a top up of what there and then we're gonna try and be less friend full full horny <laughs> less friend full horn um yes so once again if you need to get any drinks or snacks or a stretch or a wiggle uh, if you want to get something different going down that route, then you need less friendship than romantic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think... I think I have an idea where to go with that. So hopefully... But yes. Feel free to go get drinks. Feel free to go and get snacks. And... I will get a thing ready for you. Sure, let's do this one. It's been a while. And I shall see you momentarily. Go have a wiggle. You'll enjoy it. Ah, oh, horseman. How oh, we miss you, sir. <laughs> All right, welcome back, Blair. <laughs> right. It is getting warmer. I refuse to believe or understand how the closer it gets to midnight, the warmer it gets. I'm so fucking ready. Right. Um. Here. Uh. Right. Eleven thirteen. We need to bump down the friendship and bump up the feelings. Freedom. Literal exact opposite of the <laughs> And this is the... Uh, no, that's not good either. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Why? Wait, so then... Yeah. Oh, but that was so sweet. Oh, but that was just sweet. Ugh. And it's around 9.30. Jesus. Well, thanking her gets that up, right? That's gotta get... Yeah, that's... Undoubt... Undoubtedly! Give me... Give me them... Sucaris. Um... Hey... Hey, uh, this been? I don't think that would have an effect. <laughs> Let's watch them angels fall. I just want love. Hmm. But I don't know, it is... Because we had pretty much the same conversation. Oh, 
Oh, we have? Oh, is this... When we see... Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, fee does feelings... Fee oh. All right. My wings are falling out of my back. Oh, no. Maybe. I don't fucking know, Death <gasps> Just GTA ragdolled onto the sofa. Oh. That wasn't for you, chat. Don't worry. I'm not bonking, chat. I promise. I promise. Love you guys. <sighs> I'm tired of being expected to do what I can't. I understand that in heaven everyone has a role they must fulfill as our maker wills it. That we were created with that role in mind. However, what's the point in fulfilling that role when all I can do is fail? Everything I can do, someone else can do better. Oh, that's what the question is. Ow. That was a fucking facepalm, Jesus. Why was I even created when there's no place for me? So, yes, maybe that isn't just a bad thing after all. Ow. 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 Ito, Ito. <laughs> yes. Good. Awesome. Wee! <laughs> Fuck yourself. Wait. Fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, you got it! Why did you do that to me? I didn't do anything! I don't know. Babe. Do... Do this... Do this... Look like it no? Do this look like it no? I don't think this looks like it knows. I don't know. <laughs> the absolute age. Look, I do not. Outside of the context, I don't hate Keldrin. He's a very interesting character, and I would love to know him more. But in this context, he's trying to stop me, and that's not okay. That's not allowed. I have. Chat once asked if they could romance me, <laughs> and I owe them this this favor. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, I want to be with you. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> there is no stopping this chaotic train. There are so many flies in here. Eel. Guys, watch the big screen. Keep away from me and it's all right. Um, I mean, it seems like the obvious option to look at all the things that happened, although we went there afterwards anyway, I believe, regardless. Fuck. Oh, no. It's still too high? How am I gonna get it lower? And 
Unless we go back even earlier. <sighs> can you get that full? I imagine you can. Ah, need it below 10? Thank you. Because that helps, because I know what I need to do. It's just fucking doing it, but still, that is no easy feat. 22.55. Oh, yeah. 22. Oh, we hit. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Wait, this is where we. This is where we just came from. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Huh. Oh. Huh. No. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Ah! Wah! Wah! A fair place to have. Oh my god. <laughs> What's the one before this? Wait, that's way too high! Can we get it down from 13? Uh. Uh. Oh! Ah. Ah. <sighs> what was the other bad ending we got? Because we got that from staying, didn't we? I imagine that would make friendship. Yeah. No. Fuck. Bye. Sorry. Because this is as soon as we can... And then... Yeah, Finn and fucked us. Oh! Research hall. <laughs> Shit. Oh. 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 Oh! Oh! I'm getting upset weirdly. Um Cause Finnin's just been Oh this feels so this feels so backhanded. Unless I'm being a total idiot. And this isn't the point in time I think it is. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I feel bad though, because he's gonna find out! <sighs> That's what I think is happening. I could be mistaken, but what I believe to be happening, you do not have to confirm nor deny, is that. <sighs> Why is this making me sad? <sighs> it's because we've gone back to the. Playthrough we're still doing, so we get betrayed by Finnin. 
Finnan gets Yot into the abyss and then we pursue Death Row. At this point in time, Ito is the one that has dobbed Finnan into Death Row. But because we scooted through the throne room, we haven't had chance to acknowledge that Finnan has probably been Yot because of their betrayal. <sighs> For those who missed it, Cassius and Finnan are kind of a thing. And at this point, <laughs> I'm getting sad. At this point, Cassius has he been yoked though? I thought he had, because we found the memories, and then, and then Ito caught us. Because it was Ito who found Finnan. Yeah. Well, I guess we only speculated with Ito that he'd been Yo, but he still did try to kill us. <laughs> so I would feel. So basically, I'm feeling bad because I don't want to be like, yeah, let's work on this together, Cassius. For then to him realize that I'm the reason. Uh, they, their partner isn't, like, around anymore. <laughs> but that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> my heart. <laughs> Swallowing dryly, I look between the grinning demon and my clipboard, which is still very helpfully displaying a series of question marks. I think about the terrifying experience of seeing Death Row for the first time, or of Axon's distrustful glare, of Cassius's easy willingness to kill someone. Cassius is right. I don't belong here. I must go home. And if that means working with a literal demon, then so be it. Fine. <laughs> Excellent. As estimated, this restoration project will take three months. That's three months of non-stop concentration and diligent cooperation. What? But I have to- Come on. Oh, quit it. We all know you lied about your little gig here, Nugget. I- You- I stumble backwards, fear dousing me with cold water. I would fall to my rump if Cassius didn't reach out to catch me. His tight grip tightens almost painfully around my arm, his grin turning sharp. That's right. We know. And you should stop pushing your welcome here. Stop bothering Death Row and I'll help you find a way home. Are we clear? Crystal. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, so if she loves us, but hasn't seen us in a while. It has been almost three months since I set foot into the Onder. Two months since Cassius offered to help me with my devices. And today will be my last day here. There is a nervous flip in my stomach when I think about it. I've been looking forward to this the entire time. Spending all those days tinkering away in the research hall. I had my reservations about Cassius at first. I thought it was going to be an elaborate prank, but once he got into it, he has been more than diligent. Something that I'm thankful for, despite all odds. But where in the world is Finn? If it was just me, it would have taken... Far more than just two months to fix everything. Location unknown. Please report to your superior immediately, or send an emergency signal if an identified location is unavailable. Yes, yes, we'll get you home so you can stop freaking out. 
After making sure I forgot nothing, which is unlikely considering how light I tra traveled here, I push the door open and step into the throne room. Oh, fuck. I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do this. Hello, Deathrell. Hello, little angel. This is our last greeting. Hmm. I guess it is. Over the months, I've kept my end of the bargain and not bothered Death Row with any conversation. I missed talking to her at first, but reminded myself that this wasn't part of my goal. Besides, Cassius had me running ragged with tasks and errands, not just for my project, but his own, too. Nothing evil, of course. Mainly filling an assistant job and fetching ingredients or books around the lab. At least I hope his project isn't anything evil. Oh, go on, blow up heaven. I, shaking myself out of my thoughts, I bowed deeply at Death Row. Thank you for allowing me to stay for as long as I have. What <laughs> does Cassius like? His <laughs> Cassius, indifferent. Thank you for allowing me to stay for as long as I have. I hope I haven't been too intrusive. Trust me, you would have known if you were. Right. Death Row will never stop being scary to me, and she will be the greatest source of my fear for as long as I exist. Though, for all that she was terrifying, she was patient and gracious enough to let me stay, even allowing me to use her facilities, which is more than I could ask for. Well... I'll best be going now. Thank you again. For everything. There is a knowing gleam in Deathrell's eyes as she dips her head slightly. I will remember you, Sayashima. Safe journey. Thank you. I'll be off now. With one last bow, I turn towards the door leaving behind the mysterious figure eternally bathed in moonlight. Oh, Rhea's back! What a freaky bitch, however. There are two people waiting for me in the research hall, chatting quietly as I step inside. Rhea! Cassius! Oh, there she is! I thought you were going to oversleep! Through the project, I got to meet Rhea, a semi-permanent re resident in the Onder. Though her strange appearance unnerved me at first, she has been nothing but friendly and helpful. Nugget. Ready to go, Nugget? You know it. Thank you for all your help, Cassius, Rhea. I miss you, Rhea. <laughs> Get fucked, Cassius. Aw, oh, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> uh, don't lie. Oh, wrong voice. Don't lie, that's unbecoming of you. Oh, and no love for me. I see how it is. <laughs> After everything I've done for you. Oh, kill me twice, morphal fucking you. Fuck you. I love you. You're great. Uh-huh. After you made me play the monkey assistant for two whole months. Oh. Someone salty. Hard not to be. We all share a small laugh. I shake my head. But really, thank you both. Don't mention it. Ready? Ready. Oh, I don't want to leave. As discussed, we move to Rhea's section of the lab. Clutching my equipment close, I watch as Cassius draws glowing sigils in the air. The air around us crackles, charged with magic as Cassius creates a portal. All right, Nugget. Your ride home is here. All right. Thank you, Cassius. Thank you, Rhea. Goodbye. Bye. Don't forget us. Stepping through the portal, I let out a yelp. The sensation is like falling. The stars rush past me, racing, fading into an inky blackness. The experience is almost cathartic. A far cry from my arrival at the Onder. Cassius has assured me of this, saying that normal transportation should not have hurt. <sighs> I didn't say it, but maybe I'll miss that imp's quips after all. Oh no, I don't want to be- no, fuck heaven. 
Unlike my almost pleasant fall through the night sky, I stumble right onto a table, painfully the moment the world solidifies around me. Ow! Ah, I'm the... Uh... Saijima? Superior! Superior, I'm sorry, I... Gods? Oh, like, just prove my point, why don't you? Immediately, the door burst open and several angels armed and stern faced rushed in. Bewildered, I look around the room, speechless. It is then I see the remaining fizzle of the portal, and the last glimpse of Cassius's shocked eyes before everything disappears. No, Cassius, help me! Wait, no, you don't. Let me ex. Caesar. <laughs> Two warrior angels roughly grab my arms and another restrains my wings. They let out a shout of pain, but they only tighten their hold. We knew you were troubled, but to think you would go so far as to ally with a demon. After all we did for you, all we taught you, and you went committing treason. <laughs> Superior, no, you don't understand, I... There is no excuse for what you have done. Take her away. No, no! My screams and protests fall on deaf ears. Mercilessly, the guards drag me away as the superior's voice barks out for the army to assemble. For the arm, for the the army, the ah uh, the the uh, the army. The no. under. No. 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 No! 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 Ah, I thought, I was like, maybe we'll, we'll go back, we'll have a fight, we'll, we'll b bash into the shelf again, even though we knew it didn't get us here. <sighs> Alright, I feel slightly better for Cassius now. Whose fault is this? <laughs> Whose fault is this? Probably mine. Defeated even before the battle. Was there ever a battle? Is fought? I clamp my mouth shut and avoid looking at Death Row. Yeah, nothing, nothing unsubtle about that. Shame wells up within me. <gasps> I've just wasted her time, haven't I? Still feeling heavy from the cowardice I just demonstrated, I turned to the door. Might as well do something productive, I suppose. Yo! No. we did we didn't go to the hall of memory until the very end or we have no choice because that shit was sus this is the route where we're going to the hall of memory so it's starting to overlap so we should be fine to decline him 
Because then we're not focusing on fli flixing the clip lord anymore. Ah! Now he's dead! <gasps> but that still means in the other reality, like, Finnan's probably still dead. Cassius, he seems upset. But how do you feel? Ah, oh, shit. Wait, we didn't ask about Finnan, did we? No, we did. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Not on. Um, not. No, we did. <sighs> we got. What does the thank do? That made her romance go up. <sighs> so accepting accepting Cassius basically means we're going back to heaven. Re regardless. It doesn't matter whether Finnan's eating shit or not. <sighs> I'm curious what, what Lucia's going to say about Cassius, though. Even just for information. Cassius, he seems upset. Cassius, like many demons, is attracted to power. But unlike other demons, his reasons are... unique. How so? I shall not reveal his goals and personal reasons to you, for that is not my story to tell. What you must know is that he shall grieve. And because he cannot blame me, he shall direct his resentment towards you. He... He blames me for what happened with Finnan? I don't need Deathrall to go into details. Judging by Cassius's reaction and what Deathrall said to him, it was clear what happened to Finnan. You are upset over this. Yeah, duh. Alright, um... Okay, so we know... This is the one I don't know. We've done both. I don't think it makes a distinct... Does it? Maybe, maybe, though. No. No, that's 7.13, But... <sighs> Either way, we know we don't want to go to heaven. It's just the way with which we discover it. The room where we got closest, we went academic. I think. So we'll go academic. I think. I might be lying. I think I'm lying. I think I'm a liar. Oh! What?! <laughs> Wait, no. Excuse. What now? Oh my god! It's never in the places you think! Ah, ouch! I rubbed the spot where my hip has bumped into the table. <gasps> Is it gonna be a cursed item? Is it, go Is it gonna be like a cursed item? Is it gonna be a cursed item? Is, is Cassius gonna put some of his cursed shit in our desk? If that was indeed Cassius's shit from the beginning? <gasps> that would be funny. That would be funny. I rub the spot where my hip has bumped into the table, then pick up the item that has fallen off. Oh. 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 Oh no. That's worse. <laughs> I still don't know what to do with this thing. A weapon, huh? The thought of what it can do sends a shiver down my spine, but at the same time, I can't help wondering. If I have such a fearsome item under my control, then the others won't be able to threaten me so easily. Huh? Huh? Oh, 
Cassius. I mean, if it stops you dying. Hi. As thankful as I am to Death Troll, the next time something happens, she could be too late to intervene. Or may not care enough to intervene at all. If I can utilize this device somehow, I would be able to defend myself if Axon got too hostile or if Cassius wants to avenge Finnan. Cassius certainly seemed to have his reservations about it. With a sigh, I tuck the device into my pocket. It sucks that I have to worry about my safety while minding my own business. But I don't want another incident like with Finnan to happen. Making up my mind, I gather myself and head over to the research hall. The room isn't empty as Oxan is sitting at her desk. She has a knife and she's coming after me now. However, she seems too absorbed with her work to even realize I'm there. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. Using the device's description and what Cassius told me as a reference point, I start scouring through the shelves. If there's one thing I'm excelled at, it would be anything to do with languages. My ability to process words at an accelerated speed sure comes in handy when it comes to researching. I'm not sure whether I should be happy or concerned that text materials related to this device or similar items are abundant in this place. There's even a whole book dedicated to soul trapping devices and their uses. Well then? Mindful of Axon's presence, I hold back my habit of talking to myself while I work and jolt down everything that looks relevant. Looks like I was right. My device is missing a conduit of power which can then trigger it to work by either releasing the souls it's holding, or absorb more. Though, if Cassius was speaking the truth, then I can only release souls if I find a conduit. I wouldn't dare to release the souls here, though. Who knows what would happen to them in the yonder? So that means if I want to use the device somehow, I need to find a way of safely storing away these existing souls. Thankfully, I have learned about soul preservation, a required course for all angels, and I'm certain I can replicate the process. This surprisingly doesn't seem like it's going to take too much time. The most consuming process is going to be crafting the conduit. With a list of materials in hand, I keep a wide berth of oxen and start collecting what I need. Right. I lay down the array of crystals I've collected for the souls. They don't have to be anything rare or special, just pure and without color. The rest is up to how I utilize my grace. Ooh. As for the conduit, I've managed to find a rough jewel charged with magic. According to the book, I'm supposed to polish the gem while slowly siphoning the in needed enchantments into it. <laughs> I need to do some modifications to set enchantments to ma match the type of energy and magic from where I come from. But it wouldn't be too much of an issue. Enchantment. The spells need a few alchemical pro components prepared, which is admittedly my weakest skill set. The last thing I want to do is start a fire here. Or worse, replicate my accident. I take a deep breath and calm myself. There's no use worrying over what hasn't happened yet. I know I'm at least capable of modifying spells. They are, after all, just a different form of language. If I carefully prepare the material components here in the research hall, perhaps... Hey! Oh, hi. How's it going? How are you doing today? Like, have you, have you, have you, have you got a new, is that, is that a new ab? Oh my gosh, Cassius, you look so great. What's up? <laughs> hi. Ah. How dare you show your face here? What? Indignance and anger override my initial fear and shock. The stress from previous day fuels my temper and I slap the table, standing up to face the damned demon, despite barely coming up to his chin. I'm allowed to be here, you pompous ass! I suggest you take your issues elsewhere! My issues? After what you have done? Me? Are you out of your mind? Finan was the one who tried to harm me! Unprompted! It's not my fault that psychotic heathen would want to take it out of me! You mindless, groveling piece of shit! Cassius raises his fist. My eyes widen as I stumble backwards, arms up to protect myself, bracing for the blow. But the pain never comes. <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh, 
she just saved your ass. Thank her. You insolent imp. To my bewildered gratefulness, Hoxana stepped in. Her metallic hand is Cassius's wrist in a bruising grip. He tries to yank his hand away, but Hoxana doesn't even budge. Ugh. Stay out of this, Oxon. It's none of your business. That is enough! It is my business when you are about to do something moronic in front of me. This rotten drone killed Finnan. Don't be stupid. Finnan created their own end when they disobeyed Shandu. Taking it out on the Angel will only lead you to the same pitfall. Cassius opens his mouth to speak, but Oxon beats him to it. It is very simple. Besides, is it not liberating? Being free from that creature's poisonous words? To not have a superficially more powerful figure telling you what to do? Something sours on Cassius's expression. He twists his arm away from Axon's grasp, violently staggering when she lets him go freely this time. With an animalistic snarl, he stalks off, slamming the door behind him. Leave Angie alone! Imp. Ugh, foolish brute. Still stunned, I manage to stammer before Oxon turns and leaves. Thank you for, uh, stepping in. Do not thank me. I did not do it for you. Are you are you sh are you sure about that? She is sure about that. <laughs> Thank you, Hess, for the snakes. Everyone bullies me, not me. I close doors gently and, and put pretty things on them, like posters and stuff. <laughs> Some WD forty every now and then, you know. Doesn't take much. I. <sighs> I am aware, still, I would have been hurt if you didn't step in. So, thank you for that. Nah, fucking Cassio should be thanking you. <laughs> it's, it's shit. Oxen blinks at me, slow and obsessive. You would do well to have some means of protecting yourself. But real quick, let me just... Boop. I know. I wish it didn't have to come to this. Gotta ask, I gotta know. Were they close? Finnan and Cassius, I mean. Aksan clicks her tongue. At first, I thought she was annoyed with me, but when she speaks, her eyes narrow at the door. Why? What did Anji do? <laughs> a leech and a fool often go together. The imp, for all his egotistical posturing, is under the impression that he needs someone telling him what to do. And the leech latched onto that. Finnan was using Cassius? But why? Who knows? Finnan, for all that they were, a celestial was a lesser one, and that was all they were ever going to be. Damn! Damn! You can tell she's the chef around here, cause that fucker just got roasty. And Cassius, for all his confident act, is a needy little imp that craves validation. It is very simple. It was simply too simple. So Finn and use Cassius to boost their own ego? Look at you being smart. Yes, it was plain as day for everyone who was looking. Well, except for the imp himself, of course. This is perplexing. Why would someone like Cassius seek validation from someone like Finnan? If we're talking power scale, wouldn't it be easier to do that with, I don't know, Detherel? Correct. But you see, little angel, things are not that simple. I'm not privy to the exact details, but Cassius indeed sought out Detherel's approval and... something more. Oh? Go on. Deathrow won't tell me the juicy details, but 
Someone with more of an iron fist, perhaps. Is she an iron chef? Sorry. I'm sorry. It takes a moment for it to dawn upon me what Axon is implying. <gasps> oh, the plot thickens! <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't tell me and I will eat you from the yonder? <laughs> She's fun. I like the her. He... He wished to court her? Detheral? <laughs> Indeed. Well, who could blame him? Shandu is an alluring creature, after all. Something lurches in my stomach at the thought of Cassius feeling that way towards Deathrell, but I quickly brush that off. Clearly, that hadn't worked out well for Cassius. Let me guess. She turned him down, so Cassius sought out Finnan instead? That's... That's a bit of an insult, isn't it? To Deathrell? Mm-hmm. The sentence ends there. <laughs> and I guess to Finnan, too? Exactly. Finnan was quick to take control over Cassius. Envious of his feelings towards Shandu and simmering with anger that they were second choice, Finnan tormented Cassius in more ways than one. All the while giving him just enough attention to keep him tethered. I gape at Axan, unable to come up with a response. It's often frowned upon for speaking or thinking ill of the dead. <laughs> Oh my god, the accidental roasts! <laughs> Shit! But the more I hear about Finnan, the more despicable I find them. And to think I had hoped to find an ally in the Celestial. That's absolutely horrific! How are they not punished before me? Because Finnan did not put Cassius in mortal danger. They were well versed in towing the line. Still, didn't Deathrell do anything about it? Axon tilts her head, studying me for a moment. Under her piercing stare, I begin to feel uncomfortable with it before she sp finally speaks again. Spinally feeks again. Shandu generally does not interfere with one's personal business. She would occasionally provide the aid requested, but that would be the extent of it. <laughs> it's a character in my new game. However, she has her own way of subtly nudging one towards the... Perhaps right is not the correct word here. Towards the healthier parts. Oh. Yes. Looking back at my conversations with Deathrell, I can see her having that gentle tendency. It makes me feel a little warmer inside despite the heaviness of the current topic. I will cast my guess again. Cassius didn't listen. Of course he didn't. Hurt and ego can do strange things to a supposedly smart creature. I read somewhere before that trauma and emotional instability can blind a person to manipulation. I didn't think that something like that could happen to a demon. Well, I hope with Venom gone, Cassius can begin to recover. Axon gives me another strange look. That is nice of you, but take heed to my warning. Cassius seems to be rather volatile right now, and I would loathe to see him follow Finnan. Ah, of course. Thank you, your majesty. Axon dips her head in the briefest of acknowledgement and goes back to her station. With a sigh, I keep making my fucking weapon in case that prick tries it the fuck again. I turn back to my own work and try to do as much as I can, head racing with thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> She's just there with a taser. Like, yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. We're not going to get him in any danger. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, uh, not just protection. <laughs> I'll add that to the list of noises I didn't know I could get anywhere close to. I didn't sleep at all. But I didn't. I didn't because I felt unworthy. 
Because I feel I'm taking advantage of her leniency. Because I know I don't belong here. Disrespectful. I want to go back to before. Maybe without all the fears. But looking at all the guests, I know I in, in no way am I entitled to any of Zethril's time. Oxen brings Deathrell books. Cassius does Deathrell's biddings to some degree. Finnan was in charge of inducting others to the Hall of Memory. Throwing an arm over my forehead, I sigh. Even if Deathrell is generous enough to spend her time with me, I have no rights to it. And then I wonder, where did I get this arm? That's not my arm, ew. And then I throw my arm over my forehead. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. I play no role here. I have no use for her. Just like I was back in heaven. I quickly rub my face, not wanting to cry anymore. I've done that enough. Ah, uh, no, it gets interesting once again. Oh, we're running out of slots. It's happening. Oh, no. What do you got there, Sajima? A knife. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So... Um, well, yeah, that's probably, I mean, it's probably changed things slightly enough to the point where Cassius is not in immediate danger. 24 hour all ending stream. My God, I would, I would, I would go bananas. <laughs> if I knew where all of the endings were and had a guide to get to all of them, we just did like a movie viewing of all of them, I'd be down for that. But playing playing through all of the endings, that might be a little bit harder. Ah, uh, knife, knife, knife. <laughs> mean, you do have guides around. This is true. This is true. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to think. Because what we usually do is we change one thing to a significant point. <laughs> Not a knife, necessarily. And then we decide if we want to double down on that or if we want to go back to the route we had basically done before. We... I'm not, I'm not discrediting knife. I'm not discrediting knife. We will do knife. Don't worry. I like knife too. <laughs> For right now though. Look, our our priorities must stay the same. Shankin Shankin Cassius can happen any day of the week. With with celestial knife. We shall we shall shelf that. Not not far along the shelf. We'll put it one or two behind trying to woo Deathrow once again. But we'll see. If if it doesn't work out, then we'll just have to knife, so. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Man, I miss this fucking music. It's so good. Uh, right, let me get comfy because this chair is not. Right, let's go back a couple. See what's going on. Oh yeah, it's 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 cold. Don't fuck with me. I have the power of God and animate by my side. Ah! I don't have the power of God on my side. God doesn't know who I am. I was just a tool. Okay. The cold air of this hall was jarring to me at first. Now it is almost soothing against my stinging eyes and too warm skin. Well then, time to submit one of my own memories, I guess. My shudder runs down my back. After my first exchange of memories, the anticipation of the feelings it will inevitably, inevitably drag up makes my stomach flip. Well, I decided to be here. It would only refle reflect poorly on me if I back out now. Like anyone cares if I back out now. Taking a deep breath, I approach the pillar bearing my name, my heart hammering in my chest. Oh! Oh. Oh. Duty. We haven't done a duty. I'm 
not typically a messenger angel, but this kind of task are usually distributed among my age group so we can get familiar with the layout of having to practice better timekeeping. Today is my first unsupervised round, so I'm determined to get a good score. The first task, while not the most important score on the paper, would be the first any future superior would see. So, in a way, it's like a first impression. I wish they didn't give me so many envelopes and packages, though. But hey, it's part of the job. Shouldering on the bag at my feet, I skim down the list for my first delivery. A lot of my deliveries are local, so I work tho to get those out first. We usually follow down the list methodically, but a lot of times we had to backtrack and return to locations we were at dur earlier during the round. When I asked about it, my instructor only said we were supposed to follow the order given to us without further explanation. It's a bit frustrating, but then I remember the lesson I had at the academy. Maybe this is another test? To see if I can think on my feet and adapt to the situation? Well then, this will shave off a lot of time. Maybe I'll even have the rest of the day off. As expected, I have no problem with most of them. Some of them even thank me for having delivered their mails early. That soon comes to a head when one of the recipients is not where they're supposed to be. Okay, so is this the same as before? And then we get the delayed, but we have the other... We have the academy lesson there. I think. Hmm... It is a deja vu. We have done this before. <laughs> we are punished. We fucked up. Hmm. Hmm. My insights twist as, if, as I realize if I try to recall these events on my own, I would only be able to remember them scene to scene like a movie, and not at all my feelings. It makes me dry heave. I can I... This is too much. Too much. I need these feelings to go away. I... As if on instinct, I crawl on my hands and knees towards Death Rail's pillar. Inserting my key, I turn it with all my might. Okay... Ito? And then we're back here. Okay. Thirteen, that's too high. Hmm. The feelings is the one that gets the romance up. Yes, so we need that. But it's still too high. Whee! Uh oh. Okay, our rings are only. We still got a few days. We still got a few days. We still got, we still got, we still got some days. Maybe. Knife. There is still time to knife. There is still time to knife. Ah! Oh ha! 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 A sharp pain lances through my chest. This one far worse than the spikes I've experienced before. I stumble and fall to my knees, shaking as my feathers flutter to the ground, stark white against the red carpet. Taking a deep breath, I collect myself and stand. Looking down at the feathers, a thought occurs to me. If I fall here in the yonder, would I be transported to my world's hell? Unlikely. Falling is but a transitioning state of being. I see. Before I could ponder over that, though, or find some morsel of twisted relief, Death Row continues. <laughs> I would advise against staying here for too long, however. But you said... I am aware of what I said. While you are indeed welcome to stay for as long as you wish, extending your time here might not be to your best interest. I, I don't understand. You seem to have forgotten that your vessel has been deteriorating since your arrival. This has not changed, and it will not change even if you fall. Because I am too weak, and that is unlikely to change even if I fall, but... 
I really don't want to go and suffer the hell in my world. I... I would rather perish here than go to hell. What makes you think perishing here would make a better thing? I... If you perish here, it will be as though you never existed. There will be no memory, no traces of your existence left in any plane. I forgot about the eye. It freaks me out every time. Think about it, Saijima. A continued miserable existence? We're not existing at all. The choices I have just keep getting worse, huh? No worries, Angie. <gasps> we won't die. Hi, Rubeus. Fuck you. We won't die. Rubeus is here. Rubeus never dies, us. Well, have a good one, lovely. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, Hess. And we will see you soon. Hopefully, have a good rest of your weekend. If we don't see you tomorrow. I don't know what's happening tomorrow, but hopefully, maybe we'll see. But have a good one. And good night. What? Oh. bit more. Uh, day 27 though. It goes fast. Something moves uncomfortable in my stomach as I look around me, taking in the solemn silence of the hall. This is a tomb. A tomb of the living and the dead. My breath shudders on the way out, stumbling into a sharp sob. I don't want it to be my tomb as well. Turning away, I flee the hall of memory, my mind and heart a mess. Ah, oh, we need to put our fucking memories in there. Put all the memory in there. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> not the biscuits. Still feeling dazed after waking up, I decide to have some food before going on with my day. Though I've been picking up on the crumbling biscuits more than eating them. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I take a big bite of my biscuit and immediately cringe at how dry it is. I reach for the pitcher. <sighs> I know I chose to ignore what's happening even after several moments of clarity, but... Because if I really, really think about it, I would only end up breaking down. Shakily, I put the glass and push the remaining biscuits away. What in all seven heavens am I doing? The conversation with Keldron sits heavy in my stomach. Regardless of what he thinks about the Yonder, about Death Row, regardless of what he told me, one thing remains the same. Death Row has always been kind to me. She doesn't expect anything out of me. She doesn't ask me to do anything. I haven't done anything for Death Row, and yet she is still kind. Kinder than anyone has ever been to me. But what am I going to do? What do I want to do? What am I going to choose? I... <sighs> Hi... The door swings open, cutting me off on my monologuing tangent. Okay. Not mad. Not mad. Not mad, bro. Not mad, bro. Hey. <laughs> Cassia steps through, seemingly lost in his own thoughts as his eyes are glazed over, staring at me like he doesn't really see me. A second stretches into an eternity as I stare at him, wide-eyed and not knowing what to do. <laughs> it's like looking at an oncoming storm, or an imminent and sudden danger. I'm in danger. I know I have to get out of the way, but I can't seem to move frozen in place as my brain goes still. The clicking sound of the door closing shatters that brief moment of morbid serenity. Hey! Then Cassius growls. Cassius, no! Cassius, no! You don't belong here. Uh. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. Not 
not again. Cassius, no. It's different. That's right. That's right. There is no one to pray to now. Still, I clasp my hands together and hang my head. With a deafening roar, Cassius raises his hand, viciously clawed and darkening with hellish powers. <gasps> the last thing I know is the sound of my head hitting the. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. You're wrong. I ha I hate it. But I understand. The last thing I know is the sound of my head hitting the floor. We got another one! <laughs> and now we get knife. <laughs> knife time! Um, oh shit, is it too late? Here? I think it is. Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Feelings. Yeah. If you missed Hess earlier, that did happen. Uh, thankfully, we avoided it. Well, we avoided getting our head ripped off. Okay, it is late. Alright, sweet. But, um, yeah, we prayed to, uh, Deathrow, and I banished his ass in the same way as his poor beloved. So, we were fine. He died, though. So that time, he got us. I'll, I'll, you know, it's been a bad day for him. I'll let him have it. <laughs> Research on. My hand hovers over the doorknob, thoughts racing as I hesitate. After all this, my first instinct is to still try and fix my equipment. Something tight and uncomfortable expands in my chest, pressing against my ribcage in a way that makes me want to break down crying again. The more I think about it, the more I feel like this junior scribe position Grant ways was just an excuse to get me out of the way. If I could have powered through all the grunt work, then there would only be more of the same tasks waiting for me. Why would I want to go back to something like that? However, I do have a new project now. I've done a lot of prep work the day before. A little more and I may actually be able to make something out of this. I hope I won't run into Cassius again, though. <laughs> that would be suck, wouldn't it? Oh my god. There's nobody in the hall right now, much to my relief. I don't think I can handle talking to anyone right now with things going south. Going to my unofficially dubbed desk, I lay down the crystals I've prepared. Right, so now I only need a temporary conduit to coax out the soul. This gem I found should do the trick. It's not as charged with magic as the other stone, which makes it less powerful but more malleable. Perfect for a single-use trigger. As the device is heaven made, to synthesize it with the gem, I can use one of my own feathers. A bit crude, but it will do the job. Alright, let's get to it. Putting my hand over the items, I begin to siphon my grace into the gem, coaxing it to accept my feather as a medium and linking it to the device. It doesn't take as long as I thought it would. Ah! It takes! There's no time for celebration, though. The temporary conduit wouldn't hold for long. Alright, I've got this. O oh, eternal souls laying dormant, heed my voice and accept my guidance. By the power of the Father God, I cut you free from the ties that bind you. I guide you to the light and the vessels that keep you from torments. I rebuke any evil attempt to take foothold in me. I offer you sanctuary until your spirits are allowed in the grace of God once more and restored to wholeness. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power and your perfect love for me. Amen. Heart thundering in my chest, I watch as the pale lights leave the device one by one and find a new home within the crystals I prepared. 
Man, it's a shame we didn't have it ready because we totally could have like eaten <laughs> Finn and Soul. That's fucked up, but it's true. We need celestial shit. I did it. I did it. Whoa. Hell yeah. The world around me spins as I stumble backwards. I brace myself, prepared to slam in the desk behind me painfully. Hens reach out to steady me instead. Ito. No! Ew! Ew! Uh, uh, no! Hi, Rubius. Thank you. You need to stop falling here. Ah! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. He makes non committed noise as I struggle to right myself. Dizziness is building up, making my eyes water. Transforming, transferring four souls at once, otherwise known as transforming, has drained me completely dry. I should have known better than to do that in my current weakened state. My unstable emotions have led me astray again. I jump when a shimmering vial is suddenly thrust to my face. Drink. <laughs> good one. That's a good, good, good one. Good one, Rubius. Good one. Ah, uh, uh, what? Drink. It will help. Ah, uh, okay. I'm immediately transported to heaven. Too shocked and too addled to protest, I give the strangely colored liquid a suspicious, a suspicious cursory glance before shrugging and downing it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if I should have done that. What a rush! This is so good! Thank you! It is electrifying! Like being struck by lightning, but in a good way. Dizziness completely gone, I feel like I can actually fly, and in fact I'm bouncing on my toes right now! What was that stuff? That was so good! Did you make that? Liquid mana. It's my go go juice. That Death Rail makes for me. Liquid mana. Oh, goodness! <laughs> like an honest to god mana potion? I can't believe it! I thought that stuff only exists in fiction! Rebea slowly backs away as I do a little shuffle, wings fluttering with an excited buzz. Perhaps that was too high of a dose for you. What was that? The portion I gave you is appropriate for mid-level mortal mage. It appears that this is too much for you. I wonder if that is because of your power level or because the magic incompatibility. Incompatibility. I can read. Shut up. Huh? What are you talking about? Wait, put that down. Needless to say, I do not remember what happened after. <laughs> uh, it is difficult to wake up today. You had a mana rush. My ruby had to drag you in here before you blew up yourself or the lab. <laughs> no! <laughs> God damn it! That's way worse. That is so much worse. That is the opposite of what we wanted. <laughs> I know there's still time, I know there's still time, but like, fuck. Embarrassment spreads hot and quick. My wings tremble as I scramble to find words to apologize. I'm so sorry. I thought I had everything under control. I was at the verge of passing out after exerbing, exerbing myself when Rubius came. I would have really hurt myself if he didn't show up. But I think the mana stuff he gave me was too potent. Anyway, I, I'm so sorry. This won't happen again. I... Then I remember what I was... <laughs> no. No. <sighs> no. 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 <laughs> no. 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 No, he wouldn't. He would. He would. He would. He wouldn't, but he would. Then I remember what I was doing before Rubea showed up. With a strangled squeak, I pat around my pockets. They're not there. 
The crystals... The crystals aren't there. The only thing in my pocket is the device, but it's not as I remember. The gem socket is empty, and when four seething blue lights used to be are just dull gray orbs. What? What? The soul crystals are in your room. Ruby did not believe it would be safe to leave them with your unconscious body. Oh, okay. Okay, but still. Mm. They, they are? Relief floods my system, though not without a pang of bitterness. Once again, someone else has to step in to clean up my mess. If Rebeus hadn't have been there, my depleted state could have caused so much havoc. I could have shattered the crystals if I had fallen down, or worse, accidentally skipped this frickin' text, accidentally activated the device with the last dredges of power left from the temporal conduit. How am I so incompetent? Oh, I'm crying again. Help me, death a while. Few, few wings. I want to save, actually. I mean, we have a knife. We just gotta go back to our womb. Few wings. Uh, we don't have the knife. The wand? The wand? No, I left it. Oh no, I didn't pick up the knife. I mean, we'll see where this goes. No, I don't think we picked up the knife. I thought that was the knife. I look up to death row and skip the text because we already picked this. Ask me the question. The knife in the kitchen? There is a knife in the kitchen? We have not experienced the knife in the kitchen if there is one. <laughs> mm -mm, we don't have a knife. Oh, shit. That sounds like an important thing we need. Do you not wish to go home anymore? I... The anxiety is welling up again. I look down at my fallen feathers, tears gathering in my eyes. I'm still on the fence about that. I don't know if I want to anymore. It's one thing to hear Death Rel implying it. It's another to hear me... For me to say that out loud. The fear in my chest is primal, like a cornered animal waiting for the end. The pain is intense, like a part of me is being broken and pulled away. But I can't seem to stop talking. I... I don't want to face the punishments because why should I be punished for something that wasn't my fault? Yes, I was clumsy. Yes, I shouldn't have worked on something I don't know much about. But weren't they the ones who put me there? Why is it my fault that I'm here? How is that just in any way? And they were fine. Hmm. Huh. Alright. As Deathrell said, I can see the crystals lining up neatly on my desk. The weight lifts off my chest at the sight. At least I didn't fail this one. Though... Pulling out the soul hosting device, I frown. You're going to give me a headache, aren't you? It doesn't even have the decency to gleam back. I sigh. Now that I have this weapon in my hand, I hesitate again. I was on edge at how Cassius was acting, but that's no reason to use it against him. He's still a demon, though. More severe actions have been used against demons for far less. Of course, there's the role here to consider, but other than yelling, Cassius hasn't really done anything to me. But I can't passively wait until something happens. What? What? Bitch, excuse- oh no. It seems my best bet is to go on ahead with my plan and see what happens. May No, you're not. I'm gonna finish working on the soul storing device. If I can't do anything, or rather I'm not in the headspace too, about my equipment yet, then I should at least finish what I started with this. Still, I have my reservations. The idea of committing violence is so wildly uncharacteristic for me. I'm not a warrior or a guardian angel, and I never will be one. That will never be my role, and violence has never been something I'm interested in. 
I can't even fly. I need something to utilize this device. I've dug up some information on it, sure, but that's not enough to activate it in a tight situation. Something like this would require a long incantation to, uh, suck out someone's soul, right? However, I can't just sit around waiting for someone to hit me first. I have enough things to worry about. I can't let be jumped by a demon. With that in mind, and thankfully with an empty research hall, I set out to work. This is gonna take a while. We are not about to use this on Cassius... <sighs> ...preemptively. Come on, come on! This whole process is getting to its critical point. I've managed to recreate and improve on the trigger gem and safely stowed the soul stones away. But being able to shape this into something more easily utilized is giving me trouble. Alchemy using components is to, to make simple concoctions and material reformations is enough. And transforming objects, structures, and intended properties is different. All I know is that I can't use the device directly as it is. It requires an insane amount of grace to operate, and the target has to be incapacitated. Near death, basically, for the soul to get trapped inside the device. Which is a nice array of saying that the soul would get ripped out of the being the device would be targeting. I would never be able to bring myself to do that. Not even to Cassius. The main objective is to create something easier for me to use, but at the same time, changing the device's intended effect into something less... savage. This... this will work, right? No, no, I have to focus. I can't waver now at the last step. All my careful preparations would go to waste if I don't give it my all now. Alright, let's do this. Focusing every last bit of my grace into the device, I will reshape it into the way I intend. The device lights up a seething blue. I can feel its magic fighting against mine. Come on, come on! Ah! Uh -oh. A spark blinds me momentarily, sending me scrambling and panicking. Smoke begins to fill the room, driving my fear even further. Disoriented, I... Blindly grab at the device. <laughs> Whatever I come into contact with is searing hot. Screaming, I instinctively fling it away. Big mistake. The force of the explosion blows me backward. I fall to the floor, disoriented and terrified. Oh no. Lying crumbled on the floor. I can only watch in horror as a seething fire is all but consume the lab, separating me completely from the entrance. No, no, no! I can't even hear myself over the ringing noises in my head and the sound of the roaring flames. Glass bottles containing volatile alchemical substances begin popping and exploding all around the lab. I cry out, but there is no one else in here. I try to get up, but my twisted ankle immediately crumbles under my weight. My lungs are filling up with smoke. My skin begins to blister against the heat, and as I tether on the brink of unconsciousness, something dark and cold floods into the lab. Please, please help. The shadows surge forward, enveloping me like a wave of icy water. A sudden change in temperature sends me reeling, but I welcome it. <gasps> Bea! No, she didn't. She shouldn't fucking have to, that was stupid, but... <laughs> Cold, but ever so gentle. She won't let me die. She won't let me. Wow. Did get our head cut off not long ago. <laughs> I have never been to the sea before, but I imagine it would be something like this. An endless and fathomable depth. Cold, dark, cold, and full of hidden terror, yet... So gentle and lifting in its slapping waves. I give in to the floating feeling so light and soothing after the blistering heat I was pulled out of. I know she won't let me die. Well, that would be a great place to just be like, bad ending. <laughs> I know she's got me. <laughs> I open my eyes to midnight shadows. Searching through the night, sorry. To blue eyes that forever shimmer under the moonlight. Hello, Dethera. Hello, little angel. Okay. 
Yeah, no better. I know it's choice based, but I was just like, <laughs> she affected by us exploding ourselves. Hello, young angel. I see that your work did not go well. It, it didn't. I have failed the one task I'd set out for myself. Oh. My devices are absolutely mangled. I notice that my superficial wounds are beginning to heal themselves, but the process is much slower than it should be. I have never been hurt like this before. That in itself is fortunate, but I know that is only because I am... was formed as a scholar. I didn't have to fight demons or guard the gates of the heavens. I barely ever had to go to different floors. I didn't even have to deal with mortal souls outside of the basic practice runs of the academy. My apprenticeship tasks, though strictly supervised, had never been anything difficult or dangerous. The junior scribe position was never meant to be anything crazy, either. But regardless of what was planned for me, nothing could have prepared me for the yonder. A few of my feathers flutter down to the ground, stark white against the red carpet. The pain returns, clawing at the inside of my chest. It's getting worse. I might be incompetent, I might be weak, but I'm not stupid. Okay. All this time I've been such a fool. I see. Oh. Okay, yeah, so we're talking about the things Finn and Fox was over with. Of course, the one thing they did not conveniently forget to tell you would be that. I... <laughs> would it be correct of me to assume that by requesting that of you, it would mean something else? Deathrell watches me for a moment, blue eyes gleaming prettily under the moonlight. You would be correct. If you ask this of me, the you of the past up to this point of your creation would cease to exist outside of the Onda. All of your memories would be gone too. Oh, heavens. If I'm not already sitting down, I would have fallen to my knees. If you choose this little angel, you may preserve what power you have left. Mm. This is familiar. Okay. Shit. We found a new way to the same ending. <laughs> ah! So close, yet so far. Need knife. Well, for knife. We will need to tune in next time. <laughs> I'll just try and write that down for next time. Just remember knife. Oh man. So close. What was the bad ending we got then? Because we did get other than beheaded. <laughs> we did get another bad ending. And I can't remember what it was. But yeah, Cassius, I think Cassius had a worse day than us. I think we, we finally caught up with the number of times he stabbed us that one time. I think we've caught up. <laughs> I think we're even now. <laughs> In terms of getting each other killed. And we got this, which was nice. we got a good ending, so that's good. All of <laughs> memory fuck up after talking to everyone. <laughs> oh. What did that do, though? I've already forgotten. Ironically. It's because the whole of memories blew up. <laughs> Was that- no, that was yesterday, wasn't it? Where- after we got the chicken outfit and then... Yeah. I think that was the one where we got, um... Because we got a chicken outfit and we were like, yeah, we can just... Chill here. After the cupcake making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the one we got yesterday. Yeah, I don't think we got- I know it's like blending together like fuck, but... <laughs> it's because it's a good game. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we got a bad ending other than... I'll check. I'll check the footage. We probably did. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, why I found that cute? Oh, the cupcake making? Because it was adorable. Or or the beheading. 
<laughs> That's something you'll have to figure out for yourself, if so. Am I a himbo? <laughs> I mean, I yeah. Yeah, it was worth checking back, Cass, though, the first time we got fucking attacked by uh, Cassius. That whole route is very interesting. And this, yeah, it was super cute. And we still, we're two friends. Not quite on the romance level. So we're getting there, we're getting there. We've technically gotten there, we got a good ending. She looked after us, she sent us back in time. We managed to store our memory. I think that's the key, is storing our memories before the world explodes, or just, yeah, being less friendly with her. <laughs> more more romance, less, less friend. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But yeah, what are you guys think? I mean, Nay, I'm... <laughs> How are you finding it, Nay? How are you finding it, Nay? I'd be curious to know, actually. <laughs> with seeing it being played. Because I, I think it's, it's... I'm mad fucking impressed with it. So far, for absolute sure. We're getting, getting into the nitty gritty visual novel moments of just finding... Finding, finding everything. Go find the knife. <laughs> Relevant or not, we're gonna find the knife. This has gotta happen. It, it must be done. It must be done. Whoosh. Also, I love this robe. I want it. I imagine it's just like a really big, uh, soft hoodie. Death Rail's route is super difficult and intricate. I, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> She's a very difficult and intricate woman. I completely understand that. Um, I fully, fully, fully understand that. Um, we know, we know, we know what to do for, uh, freaking, <laughs> for freaking Cassius when we get to him, I think. Hmm. <laughs> yes, we shall, uh, have to have a look. Oh, Hess, Cassius, we, we, easy, figured him out. <laughs> and accidentally got him killed, like, a few times, but in this route. So when we romance him, it's, it should be an easier time. I feel like, no, we're not gonna, like, nail it. That's always the funny thing, I always see these games and, like, how intricate some of the, uh, how intricate some of the um, storylines and roots are. There's got to be someone out there that just nails it the first time, though. And then feels, like, really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of very tragic characters. I appreciate that, though. It's the... It doesn't feel unnecessary or overdone, either. Like, it's not just, like, when I was a boy, I had a cat. And my cat died, and I was like a fucking demon now, you know? Yeah, I feel that, Hess. Dude, I felt fucking bad earlier, because I, I thought we were going to have to, like, be a dick to him. Because we basically got... We we didn't get Finnan killed. Finnan got Finnan killed. But we were somewhat related to the incident where Finnan got himself uh, sought out for betraying us. And then... Um, we had the option to work with Cass to get out of here, and it was like, well, that feels sucky, because this fucker doesn't know if if their partner is dead yet. Um, okay, but yeah, sure, we'll spend three months working with you. But then it's fine, because that was the bad ending we got! We got sent to heaven and angeled! <laughs> that was the one! Unless, no, that was another one. I don't know if that was the first one we got, though. I'll check it, it's fine. Yeah, I'll have to list down all the endings we got the other the, the last two streams. Oh, he heaven's sus so, so, Like, the whole fucking army? The whole fucking angel army for us? God damn! God damn! Yeah, hella sus. Alexan was cool though. I appreciate her fucking slapping the shit out of Cassius. Cassius has had a really rough day today. I feel bad. <laughs> Finnan though. Finnan though. That happened yesterday, but I'm still shook. Gonna get Pop going to the Onda. Mm hmm. 
We did learn more about Zethra. We have Scale. But that's not the other person that was mentioned at the other neutral ending we got. Hmm. And she has a sister. And she has a new outfit, which is cute as fuck, by the way. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, we found out about Lily. Do you think Lily could be the sister? I wanna know. Who is- oh, who is Lily? Well, Lilith. The fucking... <laughs> very, very not an angel. Um, but she did escape. Finan is the only villain in this game. He's, he's the only... <laughs> he's the only one who does something out... But I can... Even then, like, I mean, uh, be being able to empathize with a person does not, not make them a villain. But I can under... I can kind of understand, maybe? Why Finan did what they did? Because it was part jealousy. But also, like... If he... He knew that Cassius fancied... Dethra. Appreciated. Um... <laughs> he knew that Cassius fancied Dethra. That was never gonna happen for him, bless him. Um... So then... He got with... Finnan instead, so Finnan's like, wow, second choice, fucking really? And then I guess just generally trying to wind him round their finger. And then if we roll up and we're getting all close to death or I'll maybe Cass would be mad at that. Maybe that's what Cass was more mad about. Do you think? What was Cass more mad about? Us getting Finnan killed or us being closer to Death Row than him? Mmm, the tea. <laughs> Maybe, probably both. Probably fucking both. I can, that's why I let him have the beheading, because yeah, he was, yeah, I understand. That's gotta be frustrating. It's not our fault. It's not our fucking fault, but I can understand the sting. <laughs> Mercy. Oh. Both is both is good. Yeah. But I'm very I'm still very excited and like this is just pursuing one character. There are two other main characters to pursue. It's fucking nuts. There's so much. Um but yes, I'm not sure if we will be live tomorrow. I will see how things are. Um as for early this week, it fully depends on the weather. Um because my parents will be coming back on Tuesday. Cries. Big old cries. Very big cries. Um, so whether I'll be able to live down here in the cool, the slightly cooler than in my normal roomness of this brain. Um, <laughs> whether I'll be able to survive up there and stream as much, I don't know. But hopefully after early this week, if nothing else, we will be back to usual. And hopefully, we will be over on Monday, if not tomorrow, over on the lovely Dying Packages channel, doing some more bang. Delay Theatre, playing some Assassin's Creed Unity will be fun times, be sure to come along. Again, if it happens, because Monday's going to be the really hot day. Kaz's route will receive an update for more story time soon as Along with a Steam Achievement update, oh my god. Will it count in the endings we've already got? <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> but yes, if you are interested in playing this game, having a romance of Cassius or Arxan or indeed Dethera herself. It feels weird. She's starting to like separate from me. Um, there's a, there's always a really interesting moment where a, a, a character voice turns into a character that turns into someone that you like like you're stepping into a mech suit like it, it's kind of got its own AI and intelligence going on and you're just kind of stepping into it to bring it to life and movement uh, she's getting to that stage and it's weird <laughs> it's very cool though um, 
yes, um, you can check out the game right now at the Steam or Itch.io. There is a there is an Itch.io page as well. Um, there is a free demo, free demo, or you can get the entire game right now and play it. Um, thank you, Hess. But yes, and if you are enjoying it, support the devs. We always say, if you enjoy the game, support the devs, send them some love. Just, just celebrate Nay and Angie. <laughs> the door. <laughs> um, you're welcome, Eswana. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's there. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. And yeah, so I'm not sure about tomorrow, not sure about early this week, but keep your eyes peeled. It'll be in the Discord, it'll be on Twitter, all of that, all of that stuff. Stop what? Little angel. Stop it. Interesting choice of words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes keep your eyes peeled we will see what happens support the devs send them some love over on twitter at fluttering abyss uh, if you are watching this in the uh in in the youtubes or the vods thank you for checking up i hope you're enjoying it leave a comment or something i don't know how youtube works it's fine <laughs> Um, and check out the Twitch if you haven't, because we stream it live and you can see what the fuck's going on in the chat that you have literally no context for it. Unless you go over to the Twitch and watch the VOD, because then all the chat will be there, so. But yes! It's really hard to stop playing this game, so I'm going to try my best. But, thank you all for coming along. Thank you, King, as well, for the resub for two years. And... Yes, also, speaking of, be sure to go and check out your wonderful local Eswana UK ninja streamer extraordinaire, modest extraordinaire, and lovely, lovely friend. Be sure to go send her some love at twitch.tv forward slash Eswana UK and also at coffee.com forward slash Eswana UK. Just slide right into the void. <laughs> um, but yes, keep your eyes peeled for more. And again, if you have been enjoying this game, you can also go and check out the wonderful Contraption. I don't believe it's streaming right now. Twitch better not be lying to me. Um, oh no, has that person gone off? I was going to raid that person. Fuck. Oh no. Shit. Fuck. They <laughs> The turns have tabled. Mush, mush. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Gosh dang it. Well, <laughs> I was about to raid you. <sighs> so, where do we get the knife? <laughs> no, it's all good. We'll give, we'll give you a taster. We'll give you a little taster. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. We'll remember our origins. We'll remember our origins. But hello, All Star. Welcome on in. I hope you are doing well today. Welcome, friends. I hope you're doing well. If you've come from All Star Stream, if you've not been here before, hi. Hi. My name is Kimaraki, but you can call me Ki. Variety streamer, art, voice acting, all of this kind of thing. And today, we are playing. The Underworld Interview with Void, which is a game that is not only very, 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 very good, as we are learning. I am uh, putting some time in, but I'm also in it, uh, and it's very cool. Uh. <laughs> but yes, let me know how your stream was. What was the fun bits? What was going on? <gasps> Doing some FIFA! Oh, I FIFA, like, I'm not a big football head. But like I, I see, I see, I see FIFA, and I'm like the ge the game. I'm like that looks kind of fun. I just want to like run around and have all the dudes like just headbutt the ball all over the place, <laughs> you know. But if you guys haven't, be sure to go and ch send all your love and check out the wonderful It's All Star 
incredible, incredible um, Dreams aficionado. Uh, Dreams PS4 and PS5. Go and support it. Media Molecule are wonderful. People who made Little Big Planet have made a game slash engine thing via uh, the PlayStation that you can make. You can make sculptures, games, art, music, stuff, everything on. And All Star is a master curator on there. And also runs weekly, bi weekly jams, um, both edible <laughs> and uh, not. Um, they have the visual jams on Saturdays for people making music videos, and on Mondays they host the jams for the music that they make the music videos of. Uh, it's very, very, very good times, so be sure to go and check it out. Send your love. Uh, I was on Dreams earlier for the video jam and weekly highlights and stuff. God, yeah, it's Saturday, isn't it? But ended with a few FIFA matches, and yeah. It's fun video game even for not football people. It seems it. Because, like, I can just imagine it being fun. It's like, I don't know which of the good footballers. I'm just gonna pick the ones that have a good vibe and then just headbutt the ball all over the place. Like, I'm playing bit blitz ball and not <laughs> football. Uh, it's a bit like Street Fighter 2. Like, you play someone, then you learn them, and then you use what you've learned against them. Ooh. Ooh. The, the skill, the tactics. Uh, but blam, I'm totally dreams 99% of the time. No, of course, dude. Always happy. Always happy to send the love. Always happy to send the love. Oh, it's that knife. But yes, seeing as we were about to end, but seeing as you lovely folks have come on over for a raid, we'll give you a little peek, a little taster into the world of the underworld, if you so wish. Please do check the content warnings um, if you are... Um, susceptible to them. I don't think we'll be experiencing any of them uh, immediately because we're going to look for a knife. <laughs> I mean, is that the wand? And then do we have to just skip ahead to when it comes up? <laughs> but some of those subjects may come up. So if you are susceptible to them, if they trigger you anything, um, or if you need to leave for any reason at any point for whatever time, any of that, no worries whatsoever. Please do look after yourselves first and foremost the worst we've there's been some existential stuff it's kind of near vibe levels of 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 dark um but there's also been we've also worn a chicken suit that was a fun time <laughs> <It's> <laughs> wonders irrelevant in death Rolls route ah oh, nuts so day six day six um do we have a day six? Oh no uh, go out. What day is this? We'll find out. Um, uh, day three. Ah, perfect. All right, let's find a knife. <laughs> Apparently, there's a knife. We whoa. Um, it's, uh, maybe not. I don't know what the question is. This is Deathrel. This is my lovely, lovely lady. That and the lady we are currently trying to romance, and have done. So, with varying levels of success, mostly very neutral success, <laughs> but she is also one of the harder characters to romance, but she's also my, my girl, so, um, <sighs> we're gonna try. Um, oh shoot, we chose a different option. An unbidden shudder runs down my spine. I don't want to be in her presence for longer than I have to be. And I certainly don't want to go to back to my room and find Haksan resting there. Best to shut that down before it gets out of hand. Somehow. I, uh... I still don't... I still don't feel quite alright yet. Uh, getting used to the changes. I think? I, I guess? I still... I'm not sure what these changes are about. Ah, uh, yes. We did not manage to address that. No, we haven't. Well, young angel, there is no delicate way to say this. Oh shit, we stumbled into a death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are turning mortal. Oh, we can learn this on like day three. Did we know this? Did we know this, ma'am? But the context, I forgot the context. We are an angel and we get sent to heaven to do duties and it's not all it cracked up to be. And we fell over and accidentally ended up in this realm. So that's fun. Oh my god. Not able to utter a single word. I fall to the ground. 
What? Despite her ever-present smile, Deathrill's gaze is cold as ice. I believe you should sleep on that. <gasps> Quickly scrambling backward, I fling myself through the door, slamming it close behind me. I can't even pick myself up from where I'm sprawling on the floor. My eyes are uns unseeing as my body begins shaking. M mortal? I'm turning mortal? No. It cannot be. I... Reaching back, I clutch at my trembling wings. A sob punches out of my throat, followed by many others. What is happening to me? What... What has she done? What have I done? Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> We've accidentally stumbled into a thing. All right. I ended up cooped up on my fourth day here in the Yonder. What in heavens is the Yonder anyway? I didn't dare to come out, staring at the door while bundling myself up in the comforter like a, sick, a scared child. I don't... I don't want to be mortal. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, what was the question? Uh, oops. He. He. He's an imp. Uh, ask, sure. Oh, we're doing all the opposite things accidentally. A week? Is she going to bunk up with me? What? How insolent! Obviously not, you insolent! Children. Mm, no, no. The child does not know how this place works yet. Perhaps Her Majesty can fulfill this one small request. Show the child around. Shandu. I... Very well. Luxon turns to throw a seething glare at me, and I instinctively shrink. Come along. Th thank you? Right away? Out of, out of curiosity. Does she like us? Ooh, okay, okay. It's not a bad start. <gasps> what? Eh? Well... So for the branch you were searching for, other than the good end I got, I need 17 points of romance with Death Row. Fuck, what were we at? Like, 15? 14? 13? I think we just have to go from the beginning. Maybe. Heck. That's very interesting, though. 14? God dang it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go all the way back. All the way. Upon following Axon, it takes me a moment for me to wrap my head around what I'm seeing. Where? Well, this is... This is definitely not my room. Little angel. That is not how the yonder works, little angel. I... The way she says little angel always manages to sound like an insult. Something dark curls within me and I narrow my eyes at her contemptuous stare. I'm sorry, but I've... Have I done anything to you? We've barely even met, and I don't think such... Such hostility is asked for. No. The birdie has a voice. Why do you have to be so rude? I reserve my rights to be wary of you. Aksan looks me up and down. The single motion frustrates me even more. Well, perhaps not you in particular. Angel kind as a unit is the same everywhere. What? Without elaborating, Aksan goes to the kitchen unit and begins pulling out ingredients and maybe hopefully also a knife from the cupboards. Sure, let's piss her off. <laughs> Getting over the shock of her statement, I ask briskly. What do you mean by that? Answer me! There is nothing I need to say to you. You... <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Suddenly, metallic fingers clamp around my neck. My breath hitches, feeling the cold bite of her artificial hand. Listen, and listen very carefully. It is very simple. 
I don't trust you because you reek of de deception just like your kind. I don't know you, and I don't like you. But I won't harm you, because Death Rail sees you as a guest. For now, that is. <gasps> Can she kill us in an alternate version of the scene? That would be cool. Look, the best thing about being murdered in this game is that it's always very cool. <laughs> Aksan releases her grip, making me sputter and cough. Tears come to my eyes at the sudden rush of air into my lungs and the biting hurt of her remarks. And the sudden realization that I now need to breathe. Go back to your assigned quarters. I have nothing to say to you. <sighs> Getting a good start with Oxan. <laughs> Think. Other than Cassius get, getting it earlier, I don't think she's been that angry at us before. Fortunately, I didn't feel the need to rest by the end of my fifth day here. Which means my mortal needs aren't as constant as a regular mortal. Yet. Unfortunately, my hunch has been right. Every door in this place is linked to the throne room, and access um, to access any other room, you must go through that vast chamber where Death Row resides. I left the dining room yesterday to on only to enter the throne room again. The bemused Death Row told me to go back to my room. I couldn't say I was surprised when the door opened to my room. Okay. <gasps> Even though I'm not hungry, I want to try and find my way into the dining room again. Is this too early for breakfast? Is it too early for Noi? Would it be rude to just bypass Death Roll to go straight to the dining room? Would that make me look suspicious? Indecision and anxiety made me take a while to go get going. In the end, I quickly duck into the throne room, hastily greeting Death Roll and mumbling something about being hungry before turning around and desperately thinking about the dining room as I grab hold of the doorknob. How's my favorite doing? Nice. Quench that fire real fast. To my immense relief, the scene before me changes and I find myself in the dining room. All right, that works. The room is empty though, which is a bonus. All except for a knife. I wonder if I can just look around. The dining area itself is small. The table only has four seats. The cupboard holds a matching number of china sets. Death Row probably doesn't have a great number of diner guests. Kind of difficult to imagine her entertaining people with small talks over bruschetta. She probably won't turn down some wine, though. Turning to the rest of the room, I realize that the fireplace is just a prop. There's no chimney, no place for logs. I don't recognize the painting on the wall, but the flowers seem to be fresh. At the back of the room, there are several cupboards and drawers filled to the brim with various packets. Oh! Are these food? No, it's a knife. None of the mass-produced snacks mortals of my world are so fond of, but what I can only describe as rations ra wrapped in ra wrapped in wax papers. That's a new that's a new one to write down. Wrapped in wax papers, wrapped in wax papers, wrapped in wrapped in wrapped in wax paper. Wrap yeah. Wrapped in wax papers. What? Wrapped in wax papers. Wrapped in wax papers and hemp and strings. Fuck. Looks like rations from the olden days. Carefully, I peel open one of them, sniffing at the dark. Sniffing at the dark morsel. <laughs> That's a lot of pepper. <sighs> Here goes nothing. Taking a tentative bite, I wince a little at how tough it is. But the taste isn't too unpleasant. Whopping worse, people. <laughs> hmm. This is probably jerky. Not too bad. The portions in each of these packets are bite-sized, too. That means I can go here whenever I'm hungry and find something to eat without having to cook anything. That's a relief. Because I have no idea what to do with all the tools on the counter of the kitchenette. However... I 
don't know what good this would do. What use would a knife be in a realm full of strange, powerful beings? Maybe I can use it for something else. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna s stab anyone, right? Clearly, the, I the knife... Wow. Clearly, the knife has no answer for me. Shakily, I tuck the knife into my pocket, hoping that I won't have to use it against anyone. Not that it, that would give me an edge over anyone here anyway. There doesn't seem to be anything else noteworthy here. <laughs> okay. At least I know how to get to different rooms now. The question is how to get to the other rooms of the Yonder. I'd imagine that would involve getting Deathrell's permission. Yet another hill to climb. Oh, shit. See, the problem is now I don't remember how to, like, not get murdered. So, um... Let's save that. On number one. Number one is the knife save. <sighs> I don't remember. Throw well, we, we heavily death are old. Uh, domain. Maybe she would prefer power, but... So I knew him. Hi, Death Wow. Love you, Death Wow. Oh, watch. She enjoyed it. She likes to watch. I forgot. Cause you're so beautiful to me. I look through the items I've collected. None of you are really useful, huh? Hey, don't don't do that to knife. All right. Ooh, did we go to the lounge? I think we did. Fuck it. Listen, music. Listen to the music. Listen to the music. Yeah, we're we're going through it at a pace because we want to see what happens with the knife. I oh my god, I um don't remember the question. True death is when oh, it's me. the memory of someone or something is utterly forgotten. Would you agree? Yes, because I love you. Don't kill me. Oh, oh, we might be okay. I'm gonna be really fucked up if this is like how we actually get to the point of friendship we need for her like best ending is by accidentally taking like just going back and picking things and taking the knife that would be really funny but i'm here for it do you desire such powers young angel no <laughs> no thanks me yay nightmares um give me give me <gasps> this is finnan i will not um <laughs> make clear my opinions of Finnan. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Stay. Let's, let's stay. You know. Hi, Finnan. You seem nice. <sighs> this is the one I don't remember. This is the one I don't remember. I'm going to quick save. <laughs> this, is the one I this is the one I don't remember. <laughs> Fuck Finnan. Wait, um, Romance 5, Friendship 9. Yeah, no, well, but that's good. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> ah, ah, eh. No. <laughs> no, that's fine. It's. That's fine. We're fine. Don't kill anyone. It's wrong. said we don't need it but he's gonna probably die anyway here we go Wee! <laughs> gimme shiny 
No, that's that's fine. That's a good thing. Phone room. No. <laughs> no. No. Uh, if we don't go to the, thr we have to go to the throne room. Fuck. Fuck. Ow. Shut up. Make it. <laughs> Josh. Uh, just get further inside. Coins. Throw them in. Oh, balls. <sighs> I don't remember. You're scary. Do we have to go somewhere else? Four, eight. Jesus, what happened? Four, eight. Four, eight. We didn't get... We did get the music, though. Never talk about Finnan, Harry. I, I forget if I did or not. Guess we'll find out. We talk about Finnan. We don't talk about Finnan. No, no, no. We don't talk about Finnan. You're scary. <sighs> Ow. Every time. Uh, in a few. Because we were really close, I think, the first time. Make... One. Hi. Mom, no. Shit. I don't remember. Have I not done all of the things? You know what? I will I will check the footage back. <laughs> and we messed up on day three. Oh my god. Okay, well <laughs> shit. Okay, we'll try one more go. We'll try one more go. Oh my goodness. Alright. I don't remember what I chose. But we chose domain. Domain. Unless there was something else. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Leave? Nope. Watch. Yeah, I think we're too late. Um. Continue the interview. Continue. You were just passing through. No. I forgot. Hmm. Oh, day three is earlier than this, isn't it? Heck. Alright, well, we'll figure that out for next time. <laughs> Brain is fully melted right now. But yes. We're just, we're just swiffing through real fast. So if you are interested, once again, be sure to go and check out the game. You can get the free demo right now. <laughs> we got like fucking six endings today. <laughs> I broke it like the first of them. <laughs> Thank you, Nay. I will, I will. We, will. we will double down on the knife next time. That's more reason to come along and see what happens next time. Why knife? Why we go back for knife? But it is, it is very, it is very cool. It is beautiful. Graphics. Just very, very beautiful. Very ominous. Very, very romance. Very romance. Very death. Very speed, yes. <laughs> but I mean, again, if, 
if if me streaming it twice in two days and spending almost seven hours per stream full voice acting most of the scenes is is any indication <laughs> of how much I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> then then maybe if you like if you like demons if you like ominous mystery if you like visual novels but not like too twee a romance if you like some darker themes but not overly grotesque and gory and for the sake of being grotesque and gory then um then there are a lot of things in this game for you and yeah, it's definitely one of the better visual novels I've ever played, I've got to say. So, very, very excited, very hyped to be part of it and be playing it. And we will hopefully be back, if not tomorrow, then someday later this week, when hopefully Heatwave has subsided slightly. But it is very exciting. And again, there's a free, free demo right now you can go and get. So be sure to once again thank you very much all star for the raid it is hugely appreciated go send your love <laughs> and if we're getting any more raids now i will apologize profusely <laughs> but do go and send your love to the wonderful all star and to all the lovelies that we sent our love to before we go and send your love to nay over on their twitter and the devs of this game over at fluttering abyss Thank you, and also the wonderful contraption who plays Cassius, who we saw a little brief, little brief visitation from. Not the reason we're getting the knife, maybe. Um, <laughs> but he's great. And he's been streaming the game as well. He's been streaming mostly Arxan and Cassius's romantic roots. We have been honing in on, on best fangy girl. Um, so if you want to see that side of things played by his voice actor, you totally can. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll all do a stream together at some point, who knows, and we'll guide, we'll guide the lovely dev team into death time and time again, but as our characters, which will be very fun. And if you have missed it and want to check out more, there are VODs available, highlighted VODs available, both on here and on YouTube, so go check that out. If you are interested in any which way, I would say very much, give it a shot, give it a go, it's very exciting. And continually being updated. And there's going to be awards and uh, trophies soon. So all of that to look out for and forward to. Especially for any trophy themes. But yes, once again, little angels. Thank you all very much for coming by. Thank you for lurking, for joining in, for chatting. For enjoying this series so far. And... Until next time, look after yourselves, look after other people, lead with empathy, lead with compassion, or might you share the same fate as some of our more treacherous yonder guests. I've forgotten the rest of the speech. <laughs> Be the light you want to see in the world. Be the friend you need in the world, for you never know when you might need a tendril of darkness to wipe away your tears. Be the tendril that wipes away the tears. And until next time, beware the heats of hell, little angels.